not going to use the headphones? I don't use it like using headphones. Well, if you put the headphones on and keep keep your voice exactly where it is. Okay. I'm going to keep my voice exactly where it is. Now, how does that sound? It sounds great. Now bring it a little closer and okay. how does that sound? That sounds much better. Wow. Right. Yeah. Okay. I'll do that. Um, now, you could take the headphones off, but I just want you to understand um, mic position. Okay. You feel good there? Yeah, I feel good here. Wonderful. Thanks for making the trek over all the way here from Brooklyn. Brooklyn? Yes. Brooklyn. Brooklyn. Now, gold, gold. Oh, uh, here he comes, Mr. Poopy Paws. We put Wiggy oh. in his author uh, outfit. Wiggy and I are authors. Wiggy, come here. Oh, yes. Look at that. New York Times, best selling list. Yeah. Look at him. Oh, he's a baby. Oh, yep, 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 yep. Come on. Oh, really cute. Oh, no, come on. I mean, I'm giving it up. Oh, my I gosh. I know, I know. Oh. I know. It's insane. For the what? audio only people, would you explain what just happened? The dog just came up, tiptoed up very quietly, jumped onto the ottoman, and then walked onto the chair that Rick's sitting on, and then cuddled, cuddled up with one Ooh. paw on his lap and one paw not on his lap. Yeah. To show him that he's grounded, but he also loves him. Yeah. And if the podcast goes well, I might get both paws. We'll see. So, uh, Jordan, um, to remind the people at, at home or in their cars or wherever else they might be, you and I met. In this room. In this room. Yeah. Crazy. Yeah. Earlier this year. Yeah. And Feels I, like I've known you longer than that. I know. I, I saw your stuff online and I was like, this guy's brilliant. And then you hit me up to do the podcast and I thought it was so strange. It was like you were watching me watch you. Watching me watching you. Yeah. You know? Um, and we learned some stuff while you were here. Oh, we? yeah. Boundaries. You, do you learn some stuff about yourself? Would you say that's fair? Yes. I, well, I learned more so I learned how to how, how to manage myself yes which actually it's proper to refer to it as woman yourself maybe we'll yes. edit that out yes whoa man myself but uh i figured having you on again would be nice because uh we like to talk about feelings we like to talk about um gay parents straight parents I like to talk about my straight oh, parents. Yes. Gulp, gulp, gulp. And we like to uh, we like to bond. I did learn a lot about myself in the in the weeks following when we would talk on the road, and mm. I was and I discovered I was worthy of people being nice to me. Which yeah, I, yeah. So well. Um, oh, his head is his head is down on his lap now. His that means the down. podcast is going well. Um, I have a little surprise for you because uh, I love that I had some perspective to offer, but I'm not a professional. I'm just a guy. Just like you. But you do have a lot of jargon. Thank you. You're jargon heavy in the therapy realm. It's really helpful. Yeah? Yeah. Is there anything that you could teach the audience that you learned that maybe they could take home with them? I did. Uh, well, I did discover boundaries from Rick, and I didn't have any idea how to practice them. And then we walked outside, and I, I was waiting for my Uber across the street, and then R Rick walked into oncoming traffic. <laughs> And said, boundaries, this is how you set boundaries, and stopped cars. And I got into the Uber, and the Uber said, I'm going to need you to get rid of that coffee. And I said, no, <laughs> right? but I won't spill it. I remember that when you told me that, and my thought was, well, you're actually now um, go, not go, allowing go. the driver to have their boundaries. Well, our boundaries collided. 
I was at an, in an interesting, I was at a strip club recently. Hold that story. Okay. Because I, I, I want to get into this with a professional president. So AI is, uh, is you've heard of AI, right? Yes. Uh, we, we talk about practice. Oh, I meant Alan Iverson. I could, we could talk about uh, yeah, artificial let's intelligence. Yeah, talk about the one that I know about. So first came encyclopedias. Do you remember when you would, like, if you wanted to look at planet Earth, you would go to letter E and then go to EA? No. Well, then came um, online searching, like Google. Yes. AI you... is a big one now, but you know what's even better than that? What? R- r- um, HI. <gasps> uh, her- heroin indicted? That's right. Oh, okay. <laughs> no, no. Human intelligence. Oh. But we mix that what in it... with, with a little AI because we're on a very high floor, as you could see, right? Mm. But with a little AI, with a little human intelligence, with a little creative flair, and with a whole lot of love, please welcome Sarah Kubrick. Is there somebody here? Oh, oh, hello. Best selling author, maybe, of It's On Me. That's why we are wearing our author outfits, Wiggy and me. Sarah, you wanna, uh, let me help you out with that. Yeah. Um, Sarah. You're a best selling author? No. Oh. Not yet. Not yet. Oh. But by the time this comes out, her book just came out. This guy is. Um, is the sun bothering you? Is the sun in your eyes? Are we happy? I'm happy. This mic will stay. Yeah, so, so, uh. Let me you. Okay. Oh. <laughs> oh. 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 Wow, I'll tell you something. Having those two friends around sure makes me comfortable, but nowhere near as comfortable as a Helix Sleep Mattress. Helix is offering 20% off all mattress orders and two free pillows to our listeners. Head on over to helixsleep.com slash Tyso and use code HELIXPARTNER20. This is their best offer yet, and it won't last long. With Helix, better sleep starts now. This episode is sponsored by... The Freeze Pipe. American owned for over seven years and affordably priced. Shop the smoothest pipes, bubblers, bongs, and more at thefreezepipe.com and use code TYSO for 10% off your entire order. That's thefreezepipe.com, code TYSO for 10% off your entire order. This show is sponsored by BetterHelp. Find your bright spot this season with BetterHelp. How do you do it? Visit betterhelp.com slash TYSO to receive 10% off your first month. That's BetterHelp, H-E-L-P dot com slash Tyso for 10% off. Look how excited he is. Look how excited he is for you to sit back down. Watch this, what, what, what he'll do. You could, at any time, you could pick him up. And anyway, this is just one of the versions. Come here, buddy. Wow. He just wow. Like sometimes. He's perfect. It's, I've never. Yeah. Oh my God, his little body. Oh Oh my God. I mean, it's crazy. Yeah, I know. It's it's insane. He's a goo dog. Did she get him as a little puppy? Yeah, she's raised him as a puppy. You know what she said the trick is? And maybe this works for humans or maybe it doesn't. You tell us, professor. But what the trick is, she says, since they're a puppy, no matter what they do, just say, good boy. That's what you have to do with kids, too. Sometimes he'll growl um, because he hears something outside. And she goes, oh, thank you. Good boy. Look at him. I know. Look at him. It's crazy. He's precious. He's chill. Oh, my God. He loves it. He loves being the little bundle boy. Yeah, I know. I'm obsessed with him. It's crazy. Yeah. Sometimes sometimes, um, when uh, I'm here by myself and the doggy and, like, I'm the only other person here, which is what I mean by by myself. Mm-hmm. I'm in the other room. I'm editing. I'll come in here to like get something from the kitchen. I'll go back in the other room. I'll go to the bathroom. He just follows me everywhere. Oh, yeah. When I go into, if I'm taking a, can I say shit? You can say shit. Poop. Why are you asking me? It's your podcast. Air doctor. <laughs> uh, when I'm taking, what's the medical term? Is it poop? Feces? <laughs> Dump? When I'm taking a poop. Bowel movement. When I, thank you. When I have, when a bowel movement, um, he'll come in the bathroom, just sit on the mat and just watch. I also take, Poops funny. I, what's that clip. mean? I think bathroom stuff is often shamed and talked about in a weird way growing up for people. It's like, don't fart, don't poop, don't do this, don't make. And so I think people just carry. Oh, oh, what are you showing off right now? <sighs> I knew this was oh. coming. Oh my 
Come on. All right. It doesn't have to be that much. Save time some time. But uh, yeah, I do think that's important. I was really hoping that like I would not have one of your horrible. <laughs> okay. Are you being judgmental? Yeah. Oh, no, not again. Come on. <laughs> I don't love that. But you told me you got good reaction from not, our episode. Not, not the diarrhea piece. Everyone's like, why did he ruin a perfectly great thing you said? Was it ruined? That's what they said. What was the thing that you said? I'm going to poop on you. <laughs> yeah. And then the, the visuals really <laughs> yeah. fucked it up. Jordan, the this is, is Dr. Sarah. Sarah. Look at this. We're boring oh him. Are we boring you? Are we boring you, little doggy? Hi, I'm Jordan. I'm Sarah. I'm severely unwell mentally. So welcome. Nice to meet you. Are you comfortable talking about your... Um, Mal maladies? Your uh, relationship uh the um the uh uh yes yes rick how you kept going back we could bleep all this yeah uh because she'd be i'm sorry are we boring you <laughs> i should don't let me sleepy look at him he's going like i know, I know. um so c are you comfortable talking about that stuff because you've talked about it on pod before so i don't know if it's i totally we can talk about it i'll talk about anything so sarah had been in uh sarah how are you jordan had been in a relationship <laughs> wow, okay. with, with a with a person that uh it didn't mesh very well mm -hmm. um well well i i'll take it from okay. here um jordan was uh she would constantly touch herself uh and the person she was dating kept um bullying her for that saying stop touching yourself you fuck. and not like sexually just like itches um eczema her fixing her hair yeah. her eyes what does that mean as a doctor go ahead you guys are ridiculous I'm not, <laughs> it's like no. 20 minutes and i'm like ah oh, they're making a joke okay <laughs> that's good we I could say just shit. joking no uh -huh. okay just kidding um should i tell the real scenario of course the real scenario is I when tell it as Marge Simpson. Oh, you already are. Go ahead. Oh me, <laughs> oh, God, um, me and me and Bart. Bart's my son. That <laughs> it's really oh, good. Me and Homer. And well, every Wednesday he would break up with me, and uh, it usually was instigated by me saying something like, "What do you want to? You just want to break up with me, do you?" And then he'd say, mm "Hmm," and I'd say, "No, no, no," and he'd say, "No, it's already done," and um. Yeah, but the thing is, uh, the thing is, we're still together now. Oh, oh. twist. Don't Babe. look at me like that, Wiggy. You think I don't know? <laughs> you think I'm not already judging myself? I need your eyes. Thank you. Back to bed. Anyway, um, so yeah, we broke up. Realistically, I'm going to say 10 to 11 times. Not that I'm counting. Mm -hmm. And um, uh, Scrooge or Grinch, the way you just smiled. Um, Animate it. Uh, Tim Curry in The Grinch. When he's like, you know. Is that hanging in Mr. Cooper? Oh, no, it's in The Grinch. No, it's in uh, Home Alone 2, I think. Home Alone 2. What's in Home Alone 2? Where's The Grinch in Home Alone 2? Oh, Tim yes, Curry yes, does yes. That. I was thinking of Mark Curry. I know what you're talking about. Oh, oh he's just got to get a little deeper in there. <sighs> okay. Um, okay. So, yeah, but now, yeah, we've been together since with no with no breakup since like July, but it's still, here's the, here's the big issue. Anytime there's any like disruption, I immediately am like, well, we should break. I'm ne I've talked to my friends who are in relationships and they're like, I never threaten the relationship. It's never, I never do that. I'm always like, we're in a fight and we'll get to the bottom of it. Whereas me, every time I'm in a fight, I'm like, well, we should just end it. We should hundred percent just end it. And I don't mean that, but I say that. And then I'm always like, I'm going to not say that, but I end up saying it anyway. Why do you think you say it? By the way, this is not therapy. We're oh, not, not doing therapy. Why not? We're doing like a therapist is chatting with some people because it's incredibly unethical to do therapy like this. But Rick's just like sitting there staring, <laughs> petting his dog. But I am curious. Jordan said that uh, she wants to go to therapy, existential therapist, but she can't afford it because you your rate is dollars an hour. Wait. And uh, so I said, I have a it way is of not a <laughs> How much do you charge an hour? I'm not going to tell you that. <laughs> I'm not going to tell you that. More or less. I'm not going to tell you that. <laughs> but you did. You actually answered that. How did you answer It's that? more than It's actually not. There you go. <laughs> you suck. That's how Take you do that it. Take that out. <laughs> Bleep it.
And uh, I'm an existential psychotherapist. So that just means that I charge f- an hour. Bleep it. Go more. Uh, <laughs> I did get some messages about that. That was like, it's so unfortunate that you don't make therapy accessible is the comments that I got. You can't, you can't read the comments. Don't no, ever I'm, look at them. Yeah. Okay. Don't look at them. The amount of people that have Ooh, talked about I know. Money. Mostly the comments were, Rick is so hot. Oh, my God. You know Rick. Oh, my God. I didn't see any of Nobody those. said that. <laughs> I, I mean, I have no I idea who said it, why they said They're it. They're talking about a different Rick. The, there's a janitor yeah. that works here. He comes in, was, cleans a little bit, and then well, he leaves Well, just you. because I'm not a hot guy doesn't mean that some people can't be attracted <laughs> to me. You're the a way, hot guy. The way you said it. You're a hot guy. Oh. No, I don't. I, it's I, validation, I, constant validation. Validation Jesus. station over here. No, look, okay. Clock in, clock out. We're at the validation we station. Hit. I'm not going to get defensive <laughs> if, that's, if that's the joke you want to pull. But all I'm saying is I don't get <laughs> comments. Oh. Being okay, here's the... She has candy here. Of course she does. Okay. Um, she you, also put shelves up on the wall because she said, next time Jordan comes here, I don't want her to say that I don't have anything on my walls. Why this. aren't there photos on the walls? Why aren't there pictures on the walls in here? I have my opinions on that as well. And it's not for me to say. It's not my place. Gotcha. We like our walls sterile here, <laughs> but it is still nice. It's, it's industrial and warm. Would you agree? There's nothing warm about it. It is industrial we and very co- nice. We put up some color curtains. If you think there is one quality to this place that is warm, the chairs, you think those are warm chairs? Those are an angry cat's throne. <laughs> mm-hmm. You sound like an angry cat. Did she? Mm-hmm. By the way, her house is like so... <sighs> yes. You have so much shed in yours. Should you put shelves up because <laughs> I said that? You should see it now. I've cleaned it up. Did you? Because yeah. of our episode? <laughs> no, I was already. I was turning stuff I'm around. Ju- yeah. Okay, I'll stop saying that. <sighs> I have a I have a taxidermied rat for our podcast sitting on a toilet, and that's a frog sitting on a toilet, and I really like that. And I want you to tell her that I'm a huge fan. Okay. I really like this apartment. Yeah. Beautiful. A great apartment. little premature with the Christmas decorations, but aside from that, beautiful. Everything's beautiful. Anyway, Sorry. I got guilty because he said that the, and I didn't want to offend her because she's very beautiful. Okay. Mm. I want to know. Mm-hmm. An exist- so I went to school for philosophy. Oh my God. Okay. Amazing. Listen, I know I'm covered in mud, but I went to college. Okay. Good merch. <laughs> I know I'm covered in mud, but I went to a college. A man gave me this shirt at my show yesterday. It's a, he said, this shirt has seen a lot of things, which means he went to hardcore shows in it and sweat. What does he say? It's a, it's a, it's a. Oh, it's like a pre-worn shirt that vision, he gave you. Vision of Disorder, which is a hardcore shirt. So he wore it for many years, and then I just immediately put it on. Slept in it, came here today. Did you not wash it? I didn't. Ooh, I know. Okay. Is that okay? We'll clean the couch when you leave. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it smells good. It smells like a man. Okay. You have an interesting thing about you. What's that? Well, let the doctor. What's so interesting about her? Everything. Thank <laughs> you. What is it? Do you think... Muskrat? Do you think that... You can say muskrat. Do you want me to edit out the way you just picked your nose after you talked about no, wearing it, somebody else's shirt without it, washing it? Or it you, still we'll over. just keep that in? Keep that in. <laughs> <laughs> I like wash my clothes after the store because you hear horrifying things of like dead skin and sweat. And dead skin? Yeah. I'm not worried about that. I'm worried That's about the little traces dust. of fentanyl to be getting in <laughs> through my skin and making me weird. <laughs> <laughs> She's funny. No, I liked it because the guy gave it to me and he was a sweetie pie and it smelled... Do you think you would date him if he said he wanted to break up with you when he handed it to you? We'll be right back. <laughs> if he said, I hate you, take a shirt, you disgusting bitch, I'd be like, yeah, 100%, let's date, let's get married right now. Okay, so that's your t- type? Jordan, yeah. uh, Jordan, um, Jordan It's actually doesn't, J-O-R-D-A-N. Uh, I'll take it from here. Uh, I'm sorry. Not J-O-R-N. Got it. So Jordan? Go ahead. Jordan. Yep. Um, all, in other aspects of her life, uh, uh, feels that she thrives when she is able to be confrontational. And what that means is she uh, has a, a Jordan, mm. sometimes has a difficult time speaking uh, her truth and her wants until she gets to the tipping point mm. of being able to then, listen, I don't want this, I do want this, you gotta get out of here. So wow. she, sometimes I've noticed that Jordan will chase getting to that point of, or surround herself where she she is where she feels she is in the most control is when she hits uh, whatever that number is, an eight. So if there's stuff that's around her where it's just not that big of a deal, um, it enables her passiveness, which makes her not feel seen. Is that fair? It was stuff, if there's stuff around me that's not that big of a deal. Let's say you go home to your roommates. Yes. And you're having issues with your roommates, but it's not to a point where it's like you're losing it. You won't speak up. Right. So 
you feel that you are seen and heard the most when you do speak up, which only happens in volatile places. Yes. So Jordan has surrounded herself, at least in a romantic place, so it may seem, and sometimes even with her comedy, to where yes. um, it's her point of view is easy, most easily expressed with anger. Yeah, yeah. Comedic anger. Yeah. You're so funny. Thank you so And much. dirty. Thank you so I mean much. that. <laughs> Not necessarily in that order. Okay. But uh, so I don't find it to be that uncharacteristic that in this relationship, maybe by being able to say, we're leaving or we're breaking up or this or that, it's like... That's the only, she wouldn't have that opportunity with someone where it was a little bit calmer. Can I tell you what is, what, I'm sorry, I, I, I'm just kidding. Can I tell you what is, as soon as you said that, imagining myself being like, hey, it really like upsets me when you do this thing. If we could just like avoid that in the future. That makes me feel like I'm dying. Like that idea of having like a, a life that's like kind of smooth makes me feel like I'm going to die. Like the idea of having a functional relationship is the most horrific thing to me. Having like every, the, the flipping the desk over and being like, fuck all of this. You know, like in A Beautiful Mind when he tips his desk out the window and it clatters and then he leaves his house and he comes up with a brilliant idea. I'm way more identified with that than being like, let's sort up the papers, let's organize. Oh, this is a post-it note. That freaks me out. That feels like a passive beige way of living that I really am afraid of. So I'm very afraid of like, you know, I would rather fight than be like, let's just read our books next to each other. I don't know. Reading the books next to each other is nice, but I would rather fight than have, than, than just be like this. We're both having a weird moment. Let's not talk about it. I'll give him space. He gives me space. I'm like, I'm coming over now and we're going to settle this, whether it's the end or the beginning of the end, we're doing it. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? Absolutely. People who are like, like when I'm on Prozac and people always go, like when I ask them in the audience, they always go, I'm level right now. And I'm like, I don't even have any idea what that's, that would be, that's a crazy idea to me. Level to me is like, it's like the, that movie, The Whale, where he's just eating constantly. That's like no spoilers, a level. Sorry. But apparently Brendan Fraser ate a lot in that movie. A lot. That's like level to me is somebody just like passively getting, take, consuming things and not really having any electric output about anything. Just a shit machine. I feel like we can have a sense of idea vitality without extreme highs sense of vitality vitality and i think that's like the feeling we all want which is like to feel alive to feel in possession to feel ownership of our lives but i think a lot of people do get it from contentious relationships because they don't know where else to get it they don't know where to get that high or where to get the permission to tap into emotions they want to tap into anyways so maybe someone's angry about a bunch of things but they find a partner that will piss them off. So they have permission and a valid reason to be angry and to express that anger. I'm not suggesting that's what you're doing, but I think it's fascinating that uh, as a kind of as a society, we have um, become so uncomfortable with healthy dynamics and with a sense of being content. And then we lose our ability to tap into who we are and our aliveness when things are good yes so then we fuck things up just to feel something it's a little bit of a digression i don't want to go too below the line here but you said as a society we've become yeah that makes me feel like when people talk about the way america used to be or how good saturday yeah. night live used to be or whatever it is where people think that the golden age was when they were coming up but like is it worse now i mean in the 50s people wouldn't go home and say how they felt they said you know they would hit their wife and say, you know, suck my fucking chode and make me dinner. Suck my penis. I'm sorry. In that order or? Not necessarily. But like, was it better before and now it's not? Or is that just? That's not what I mean. I just mean uh, in general, that's where humans are and where, where we've where we've landed. I'm not saying we didn't land there 50 years ago or six years ago. So that being the case, it's not that unusual. No, not at all. And I used to do something very similar. Like, I was never an angry person, but I would just keep my mouth shut until it was where I was almost done with the relationship. And then I would say something because mm. then I didn't care because the threat was no longer there. It was the only time. And then I was like, yeah, I'm taking ownership. And it's like, no, you're not. <laughs> like at this point, you already grieved the relationship. You already know the relationship doesn't work. And then you decided to speak up and you, you were allowed, you allowed yourself to get pushed so far that now you have the consequences of like, can I respect myself? Can I trust myself? And that's something that I think a lot of people do. And I would say a lot of women find themselves in that position 
quite often. Were you afraid to speak up before it was too For late? For sure. Because it was like, what if they don't like it? What if I lose them? To me, that was just like the worst thing that could ever happen. So indirectly, it's better to have them and be unhappy than try and fix it and potentially lose them. 100%. I've, don't this, do this at home <laughs> is this a fair analogy it's like saying uh, I want to eat french fries I don't want to stop eating french fries I don't want to lose french fries um, and then you're going to keep getting a stomach ache and clog your arteries and until you have a conversation with yourself and your mm. cook uh, of what alternatives could we have I'll still eat potatoes but could we find a healthier way to eat these potatoes mm -hmm. so you're either going to keep eating french fries until you just get sick and I'm never eating them again or you'd be like let's let's get some sweet potatoes some yams let's bake them every now and then we'll have a fried one maybe on weekends it's a prioritization thing right like what is more important belonging to someone belonging with someone or belonging to yourself I think unless that prioritization is established, you're going to have a really hard time because there's nothing wrong with wanting to belong or to have intimacy with someone. That's a very normal, healthy human need. And yet when that need becomes so strong that your need to be to belong to yourself um, takes a backseat, that's when you're in trouble. So I think a lot of it goes back to like, what is the most important thing to me? And you can sit there and you can, you know, philosophize all you want, but your actions speak to that so much louder than your thoughts. So if you see that you're constantly in relationships that take precedence over your relationship with yourself, that's your answer. Even if cognitively you're like, no, I care about myself so much. Your actions are not showing that. Okay. Um, I'm sure there's other ways of looking at this and there's more than it's not that it's not binary, but you have your emotional side, your logical side. We have our child or our adult, whatever, and everything <laughs> we're in between, right? When all the phrases, yeah. when the go, emotional go, go, side go, go, is go, go, triggered go, go, and go, go, or go, go, go. you have such a strong connection to it, mm -hmm. even if the logical side is saying out loud to yourself, mm -hmm. I can't do this mm -hmm. or I need to do this. Mm -hmm. I know, I know your people in your life are telling you this thing that you're not even not only do you not disagree with you agree with it mm -hmm. but it's just it's not that easy as of course it's say. not easy mm -hmm. so do you have any tools or techniques to um parent yourself better um I've, i want to give an example of one that i've learned that i have talked about in my podcast before but this kind of opened the door of trying to like how do i be more efficient with this um i would stay up very late still often do but sometimes like five six a.m and Sometimes it's because I was editing. Sometimes it's because I was awake. A lot of times it was because I didn't want to get ready for bed. I'll watch another episode or whatever it mm -hmm. might be. Um, if I were washed up or if I were already in bed, no way. I'd be like, I want to go downstairs and eat some mangoes and watch Game of Thrones again. I, no, I'm staying in bed. So what I start to do is I would say, buddy, I get it. I don't want to go to bed either. Let's just brush our teeth and wash our face. And if you want to come back down, you can. Almost compromising with mm -hmm. myself. I don't want to. I know. Me neither. Let's just, we, we don't leave the TV on. Come right back. And I would go brush up and wash my face. And sure enough, I would then want to go to bed. Mm -hmm. So like there was a cheat in compromising with kid and adult, right? Um, it's easier for going to bed than it might be for relationships or work situations or whatever it might be. Um, You're saying like fake it till you make it. It's not fake it. It's To me, what it is, is acknowledging the difficulty without judging it. And that's why I say out loud, I really say like, I don't want to go to bed either. Like there's two of me, like I'm acknowledging this obstacle and it exists instead of being like, who cares? Don't be sad or it's not that big of a deal or you need mm -hmm. to go to bed. Tell me why. Tell me how I feel. And I've learned that I could do that better than anybody else can. So I don't want to do this. I'll do this. So um, uh, by saying like, acknowledging what I don't want to do, finding that to me was a compromise. Like even I know you'll go to bed, but like if I don't want to, I don't have to. So finding a compromise with myself, it just makes it a little easier. So I don't know what the compromise would, in the French fry analogy, it would be, I know fries are delicious twice a week. Mm. You know, it, it, it's saying no, it's like, fuck you. Like finding that thing. But in a relationship, it's not like you'd be like, I'll only be with this person on the weekends. You know, I think the only- I mean <laughs> yeah, I guess, but that's not sustainable no. unless that's what you both want, coincidentally. But like the other version that is finding that compromise of like, hey, this doesn't work this way. So here's my thing about compromise. And this is a hot take. I think Ooh, our emphasis yes. on compromise is bullshit. 
I, I, I like, have a hot take with you. Go ahead. Like, if you have two people constantly compromising, that means you have two people constantly getting 50% of what they want. Now, hear me out. Okay. 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 Yes. I think compromising on preferences. Sure. Example me. Why not? Um, Example me. She wants Greek food. You want Indian. So we get Mediterranean. <laughs> sure. Or you go, okay, today we get this. Tomorrow we'll go get that. Right. Fine. Whatever. No big deal. That's great. That kind of compromise, do it what? until the cows come home. Okay. What's a, now tell me one that is not okay. Boundaries. Needs. Values, yes. sense of self. No, no, not an obvious yes, because people do not know. Well, the if difference. I want to raise the kids <laughs> Jewish and and my partner doesn't, I mean, how do you compromise? We'll raise the the daughter Jewish and the son not. No, but boundaries. It was interesting. You said like, well, my boundary to drink my coffee in the taxi went against the taxi driver's boundary to have me have the coffee in the taxi. Whatever. Okay, this happens in relationships all right. the time. And the unsexy truth is that if you have incompatible boundaries, you're incompatible. Uh, that that tracks to me. Okay. That I absolutely agree. If there's constantly things that you yeah. have to compromise where I'm losing, then you're losing. Sure. But there are, there are, um, acknowledgement is a big one. I'll say for me, I don't want to speak for everybody. <laughs> I think everybody likes that. Yes. Um, so if there's something that it's acknowledged and considered, mm -hmm. then ultimately the compromise, the re one of the benefits of a compromise is it, it, it can help make the other person and both people potentially feel seen Correct. and acknowledged, right? But hey, listen, uh, it's the guy's car. So ultimately, if, if, if he doesn't want it in there, he, it's, he's got home court, throw it away. Yeah. But if you were to say, listen, I am going to this thing that I'm nervous about. I'm really tired. This is really going to help. If you need me to throw it out, I will. You'd be really doing me a favor. The driver may still say no, but being that it's acknowledged, oh, this person really wants it. They're seeing that. I trust that they'll be careful. That driver might not feel the compromise. And that driver might then say, all right, go ahead. It's not that big. It's just some people you never know. For sure. So like having the conversation of the needs and the wants doesn't mean that you have to do that. Mm. But I think that that goes sometimes even further than the compromise itself. Religion, I think children, it, where you live, those are those are things that you can't change day to day. Say I'm like, say I'm like, okay, we only, we, you want to have sex five times a week and I can't do that. I'm, I, I only want to have sex once a week, right? And you're like, let's compromise and have sex three times Can a week. I take this one and then you grade me? Yep, perfect. Okay. I think this falls under the category of what Sarah was saying, where like, it's just, that might be a compatibility issue. Yes, yes. I However, I am of the strong belief that sex is important and it's not always for both people. It'd be great if it is, and it should be most of the time. I don't know about scale, but I mean like, sex isn't always about coming. Um, it's about connection and and getting your needs met and fulfilling other needs. And also there's an intimacy in relationships, especially monogamous ones where like that's really important. I do think a conversation needs to be had saying, listen, we don't have to have it th three times a week. It is really important to me. Is this something that you can't feel you can't meet for me? I mean, for us to sometimes have it more. And if not, I think that falls under the compatibility issue. But uh, I think you got to have sex. Doctor? I definitely think... <laughs> I think you have to have sex. I do think you have to have sex, but I'm just wondering about the, like that compromise to me is like a bit of a deal breaker because it's like- It's also not sexy to compromise sex, but also sometimes- It's not sexy to compromise sex, but like that's an example of something where I can imagine just because the boundaries thing has gotten so crazy, like the idea of boundaries, that I can imagine somebody being like, look, my boundary is I need to feel attractive and you need to have sex with me. I mean, that's not a boundary. Yeah, boundaries right. are just, yes. But you course. know how people will yeah. now use them in that way and it's like- People are using boundaries in a way that's like, this is, I'm setting this boundary for myself. And if you don't meet it, they're that, using that's it as a standard. Excuse to be selfish. Yeah, yeah exactly. They use it as an excuse to be selfish. I also think people are overusing the term AI, but not the point. Okay, gotcha, gotcha. Um, but yeah, when people say what their boundary is, that's just a way of shutting down, like saying there's no conversation about this. Right. I mean, sometimes it's a boundary, but if you keep doing that, I do think people um, overuse that. Yeah. Doctor? 
<laughs> Thanks for throwing that. No, I think going back to the actual conversation of how do you compromise with a person? It's not a fry. It's not your inner child that you're like, oh, I know it's hard, but let's wash yeah. our face. Like, it's really difficult. And I, I think where we make the mistake is we don't catch it quickly enough. So it. what it, problems. So this is what happens of like, I'm prioritizing you over myself or here are the boundaries, values that I'm compromising. You start dating someone. And the issues you have with someone the first like three to six months are often the issues that will end your relationships even 10 years later. But what we do is we allow the infatuation, the intimacy, the sex, the whatever. Um, we get so attached at that point that we do, and we ignore it. And then in about you know, a year, five years, 10 years, it comes up and you can't ignore it anymore. Mm -hmm. And there's resentment. And there's so much resentment. But if only you would slow down the attachment at the start so you can be more clear-headed and make these decisions, you wouldn't be in that situation. Yeah. But it's not surprising when people break up. I don't know if it's surprising to you after <laughs> every time you guys break up, but you probably Roast know. You That's how a doctor roasts someone. <laughs> I don't, I don't know, know if it's surprising, surprising to you. you. <laughs> it's yeah. it times. What are you, a Kit Kat bar? Because you're breaking it off. Oh. Um, but do you know, like, you. that was solid. Yeah. Yeah, you know <laughs> now what? Now I want a Kit Kat. We could do that. We do have candies, not Kit Kats. But I would say. I want a Kit Kat. I would love a candy. Next time there's a problem, you should tell your partner um, for you to give me a break. <laughs> So the freeze pipe is our sponsor. And the freeze pipe is also the main pipe that we use when we are dabbling on the podcast. If you're tired of those harsh <coughs> types of feelings when you're smoking, this definitely will mellow it out. Every freeze pipe comes with a freeze pipe glycerin chamber that actually cools the smoke down by 300 degrees. We'll put up the pictures here. There's hand pipes, Bubbler Pro, Bong XL, Mini Dab Rig. These things are also, by the way, I mean, you could see, but they're just beautiful. They're, they're cool pieces that you could keep out. They also make great gifts. Don't believe me? Why don't we ask the greatest gift giver of them all? Old St. Nick. Santa? I'll tell you this much. Get the Funyuns ready and the fun dip outside because I'm coming in hot with a couple of hands looking for snacks. American owned for over seven years and affordably priced. Shop the smoothest pipes, bubblers, bongs, and more at thefreezepipe.com. Use code TISO for 10% off your entire order. That's thefreezepipe.com. Code TISO for 10% off your entire order. I sleep on a Helix mattress. My parents sleep on a Helix mattress. My cousin Teddy sleeps on a Helix mattress. My aunt sleeps on a Helix mattress. Countless people out there in the Tyso universe have bought the mattress. And I'll tell you something. If you don't need a mattress, this ad ain't for you. If you do, head on over to Helix Sleep. Take the two-minute sleep quiz. Figure out are you a back sleeper, a side sleeper, a, a hot, cold. You just let them know a couple of things. They'll suggest a mattress to you shipped to your door. I know what you're thinking. Yeah, but it's going to be so big. How do I bring it in? It's compact. It's easy. You bring it upstairs or into the room. You open it up. It unfolds. Try it for 100 days. If you don't like it, ship it back. They'll pick it up. No cost to you. Give it a go. All the mattresses have a 10 to 15-year warranty. They were also awarded number one mattress by GQ and Wired Magazine. Listen, the mattress is good. Head on over to helixsleep.com slash Tyso and use code HELIXPARTNER20 to not only receive 20% off all their mattresses, you'll also get one psych, two free pillows. Listen, this is their best offer yet, and it won't last long. With Helix, better sleep starts meow. Now, I wish I could do "Give Me a Break" as opposed to "Break Me Off" a piece of that. Break me off. And give me a break. Give, give me a break. Break, break me off a piece, piece of that. that. Gotta have a piece of that. Kick me off a piece of that. Kick Kick that bar. Bar. Wow, so nice. That's great. I like how you added the "Gotta Have a Piece of That." That's like the extended version, mm -hmm. like on a sitcom when you the, the opening, like before it's syndicated and they shorten the song. Yeah, that's like the longer version. The, of that. Yeah, the extended release. Yeah, yeah. You should get sponsored for this. Uh, I will say um, that uh, I'll eat a Kit Kat bar and Kit Kat bars offered a lot to me since I was a kid. But as far as over the counter chocolate goes, that'll never be a, a first Same. choice of mine. Never. No. Same. Kinder Bueno for I'll me. take it for the, Ooh. yeah, of course. Wow, that's like my childhood, Serbia. I think we have we some here. Some. Oh yeah, you're not American. Oh, no, she's, not. She's, she's, a, she's a war baby. 
Are you a little war baby? <laughs> well, I've never been called that before. Let's not get too, let's keep going with what we were talking no, about. No, yeah, we're, we're not talking candies. about yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, so That's, you that you do have an accent. Talk, yeah, yeah, talk in your regular voice. Hello, my name is Sarah, and I am Serbian. Nice. That's a real voice. I was looking at too. In case <laughs> that was really good. Maybe we should use yours. Yeah, in case you want to use my face. I Anyways, I'm from, I'm from Serbia, office. and we eat a lot of fish. <laughs> Dog. So we're talking. What do you eat a lot of? The, Please, the, what's the talk? <laughs> Kinder, Kinder Buena bars. Oh, yeah, thank we're you. We're talking about like this. We're talking like, about um, issues uh, and uh, 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 unwillingness to compromise, and wanting to compromise, proper boundaries, improper boundaries, noticing what might be both red flags really and or ignorance. Incubate. Give me an example. You know, this is going to be a problem in your relationship. You're like, that's a job for future Rick. Right. And, and then future Rick is here and right. now it's still your problem. And it was your problem a couple months ago. Oh, yeah. yeah. So I think that there's a lot of, we can avoid a bunch of problems if we were a bit more honest with ourselves at the start. And if we were really deliberate about prioritizing ourselves at the start, and that is so much harder. That's a lot easier said than done. I, I think it would be better for not just the person to prioritize himself at the start, but the relationship as a whole, because I have noticed um, that in relationships, I remember there was one a girl I dated like six years ago and we were, uh, she had said something to me, we were a few months in and she wanted me to do something for her, which I would do if it mattered to her, but it's not worth getting to, but she, she said to me, this isn't something that's important to me. It's just something you're supposed to do at least for the first couple months. Oh, geez. And I remember thinking like, if this is something that matters to you, I'll do it not just for the first couple months, I'll do it. But if it doesn't matter to you, wh why are we doing this? She goes, because that just shows if you're not doing things for the first few months, imagine what it'd be late. She was conditioned to believe that people, and I have also since learned people do do this, show up in their professional suit for the first mm. few months um. and then reveal who they are. I, uh, to the best of my knowledge, um, in a, so one might say, difficult way, <laughs> show up difficult at the beginning. Um, these are my needs. Uh, this is, when you come into my house, this is what you have to do. Uh, Hot. Um, <laughs> yeah, <really. laughs> but if this, is no, not for, if this is not for you, I don't want you to figure that out in four months, and I don't want to have to find a way to fade into it. Um, like yeah, and I don't like giving you compliments, but like you're very self-aware and you're like, most people don't function the way you function. I think if more people did, dating will look a little different, but I, I think people are, people want to be loved and they're like, okay, how can I show you my best self? But don't they want to be loved for who they are and not who they're pretending to be? I mean, I'm an actor I mean, by trade, award winning, <laughs> but if you could love me for my craft, it doesn't mean you love who I am. Of course. And it's, uh, people love me for my craft. And people or don't really know the do. difference. They talk about it a lot. <laughs> <laughs> we put my award in. So mm -hmm. do you feel like you're loved for who you are? Not by yeah, audiences. Yeah, I mean, not my whole thing is I don't find, I don't, I'm not interested in a relationship that's not going to, that's not going to perpetuate itself into the future. I don't do like flings. I don't like dating. Like if I am with somebody, I'm like, I want this to last a long time and yeah. I want to do that. And a lot of times I get into a position where the people I'm attracted to are people who are like, I can't get, I can't promise you even more than like a week. And I'm like, well, 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 that I can't do this then. And then they're like, all right. And I'm like, oh, that, never mind. I'll wait and find out. I'll wait and find out what happens. And then time goes on and I'm like, okay, it's going well. Mm. Do you think this could be like a long-term thing? And they're like, yeah, if you'd stop asking me that, it'd be easier to know. And I'm like, okay, well, yeah, you're right. I should chill out. I'll chill out. And then some months pass and I'm like. We call that bargaining, yes? Yes. We call so Dr. Yeah, Rick. that's so I, I know my back. I mean, I you tried. say Dr. Sarah and I hate that. Sorry. Mm -hmm. I know the I know. You also the, hate, hold on stop for a second. <laughs> also, why do you hate giving me compliments? What does that mean? What Because you get you so many. Me? And then the comments were like, Sarah's so into Rick. Look at her. Just like she wants Rick. And it's because I was nice you have to, to you. You stop reading the comments. Yeah, I got to That's, what, gotta that's stop. what they do. People sexualize guys and girls guys and on girls, podcasts. Yeah. Yeah. Somebody always wants to sleep with somebody and or they, they slept together. Uh, I podcast with my friend Esther Bravitsky and people are always talking about, oh, they got to fuck already get over with it. Or you could tell they used to fuck. It's like, n n that's insane. <laughs> yeah. But people online, guys online, um, 
Show Rick throwing up when he says that's insane about sleeping with Esther. Throw him throwing up all over the dog. Thank you, John Michael. <laughs> I should thank Tom. Thank you, Tom. And you know, let's use this as an opportunity to promote Tom's YouTube channel. Hi, my name's Tom, and this is my first stream. One day I hope to make it big and become a famous live streamer. Tom? Great. He's got a YouTube channel. Um, but uh, No, I don't hate giving you compliments. I give you compliments all the time. Thank you. I don't. I didn't notice, but I also don't need them. They're meaningless. That, to that's me. so not true. Okay. Um, sorry, you were saying something actually really interesting and important before Rick yeah, made it about him. Uh, <laughs> I like this dynamic. Yeah. You know, Sarah, <laughs> I don't think you realize how much you reveal about yourself when you're not even talking about you. Uh oh. Is that something that we could get into? Sarah, sure. do you, are you in a relationship? Yeah. Really? With yeah. yourself first. <laughs> first and foremost. So. Yeah. Oh, yeah. What did you want to say about my weird boundary thing? I would it's love not it. weird. I, I think... Uh, Look, at when we're even talking about her boundary, she feels a need to hide. She needs... Yeah, she's comfort. No, it's fair. No, I... The one <laughs> thing that I tell people sometimes, and take it or leave it, because obviously I, I just met you, but I feel like if we have a constant pattern of finding emotionally unavailable people, maybe we're not actually as available as we think. In, oh, okay. yes. I love that idea. Like... You think that maybe that's Clip what you it. want is a long-term relationship, but that scares you. That's new for you. You don't know how you'd manage it. So you make sure you don't find yourself in that situation. And that's something that happens to people all the time. And then they're really frustrated. They're like, I'm always dating these. But it's like, there's a reason, probably, if it's a long pattern, there's a reason you're doing it. There's a reason it's safe. And there is a need that it is fulfilling, even if it's not something you think you want. That's all I wanted Speaking to say. Speaking of fulfilling and something I really want, I have a chocolate croissant if we want to take a little, I could cut it up into thirds. <laughs> now, is this something that you keep doing or is it just, it's been going on with the same one person? Um, it's usually, I'm usually into people who are, who are like me where the idea of a long-term thing is, I mean, it is. That's great. The only way I feel comfortable is, is with somebody who yeah. doesn't. If that's what she wants and then she finds people that want the same thing, yeah. Is that what she wants or is that what her trauma wants? Jordan? Oh, Jordan? My trauma. Um, which is my pubic hair trimmer, trimma.com. <laughs> Slash Tyso for 10% off your first order. Oh, yes. Slash and you get Dyson. a book with it. Come on, guys. <laughs> like there has yeah. to be, I felt left out. Okay. 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 Poor Sarah. Mm -hmm. Um, I, yeah, I mean, I think that if somebody was like, Hey, I want to be with you forever. I would be like, you don't know that you're unstable for saying that <laughs> you don't know yourself. If you possibly think that you know that. Is there something that scares you about, like saying we're going to be together forever is, uh, is a nice sentiment, but it's also a defined expectation. Do you find that you are uh, turned off by expectations, even on smaller scales? Do you have difficulty making plans? Or if people want you to show up a certain way, does that make you feel uncomfortable? Um, <laughs> show up a certain way? Yeah. Expectations. Like, like dress up? Sure. <laughs> wow. Sure. Yes. If I was, if I'm booked on a show and they're like, it's a white glove event, please don't look like shit. I will show up like this just because I'm like, I'm, I will not do what you right. say. Because I, that's, that, there's a good way to show you who you really are by confrontation. Interesting. Doctor. <laughs> I've been to jail a lot. She visits people. Oh. She does she <laughs> no, performs no, no, no. in prisons <laughs> often. Yeah. Yeah. Do your bit about, about the difference between being behind bars and going out drinking at one again. Um, one is, uh, one, but in both you're getting your butt. It was sexed with. <laughs> it's, it's a great joke. Great joke. But not as good as a joke as the one that she's been playing on herself for all these years. Tell me, oh why is it that if somebody says that they want to be with you forever, that scares you? Does it scare you the forever or does it scare you their certainty or does it scare you that you're committed? Sarah? Oh. <laughs> um, is this a good question? Though? It is a great question, actually. Am I good at this? You're, you're, Should I write a book? No. <laughs> We were talking about I us writing a book together. No, but guess who hasn't gone back to me about that for a year and a half? Who? Hmm. Um, no, yeah, which part of it scares you? It's fascinating. I also, I'm like, I really, I think modern monogamy is an interesting concept. Um, and uh, I first want to hear what you have to say, and then I can explain what I think about modern monogamy. We already, based on calling it modern monogamy and mm -hmm. saying it's an interesting concept, we already know how you feel about it and you're for it. Go ahead. I don't know what it is. What? Yeah, modern monogamy. We used to get married for utility. We used to get married so we could have an alliance and an agreement. And monogamy was maybe something that was wanted but wasn't forced and wasn't part of, wasn't at least not for men, thanks to the Bible written by men. It was about, uh, <laughs> it was about, uh, it was about, it was pragmatic. Mm -hmm. And now it's about 
more than that. It's that. It's also this partnership and it's also this need that you must not stray in or out. Now, listen, I'm not going to talk my take. I will. I want to be in a monogamous relationship and that's a choice that I have made and I grew up around and I like that idea. But I do think that modern monogamy can be defined as something that has a little bit of judgment behind it, even if you don't tell your voice. Wow, that was a lot of nothing. Um, <laughs> What's your take on <laughs> You're modern really monogamy? Good. No, but I guess the way I define modern monogamy is people are monogamous for... A, even if they don't want to be. No, people are monogamous Edit that out. in multiple relationships, meaning you will encounter people that fit for a phase in your life that align with you and that sense of self. And then maybe in five years, maybe in 10 years, and maybe throughout your whole time you'll find, or your whole life, you'll find, hey, you no longer fit this version of myself and now you're going to go and be monogamous with someone else. So you you're prefer about monogamy. Just breaking up and going to somebody else. You talk about you're with someone for five years, you have a great monogamous relationship and then you realize it no longer fits and instead of forcing yourself to remain monogamous to this person, right. you choose to enter another monogamous relationship that fits that sense of self at that time, those boundaries, those expectations. And so it's saying it works, you are monogamous, but you can be monogamous with different people throughout your life. Do you feel there is something also to being with somebody for five years? Chances are it will be difficult. And sure. to have some type of commitment, whether it's marriage or just an agreement hmm. saying that like before we decide to potentially be monogamous with other people, which that will then only last five years, which you could, you know, some people for change sure. agents every couple of years. Of course. But uh, it's not an excuse to bail and it's not an excuse to be like, now I'm bored, I'm going to leave. But it's also giving more freedom to like, you can prefer monogamy as a structure and still not be with yeah. someone forever just because you decided to get married in your 20s and now you're 60 and hate the person, but you're like, I'm monogamous and I can't, right. and I don't want to cheat and I don't want to, participate in any any other relationship structure. So it's saying you can remain monogamous, but you can also change partners if that is right. what works for you. Yeah, I would say that my I would say that my uh my child self in me is like I want somebody who's going to be like I'm not leaving. I got you. I'm here. And my philosophical brain self is like the idea of that is horrendous. I never want to be with somebody who's like no matter what, we will stay together and yeah. we, will, because, we will work through no matter what happens. We won't switch partners because we have each other. But I want to feel safe. So I want somebody to be, I basically want somebody to be like, I'll be here forever. But, but there, you choose if you want to stay. <laughs> I feel right. like that's what people want. They're like, I'm here. We'll work on it. I love you. I'll stay. But you choose if you want me or not. I think that's like what everyone wants. Yeah. There's there's something to committing to a decision. And this is this is something that I have been practicing, but in small scale things. Committing to things is difficult for me because if I say I'm going to do something, I, 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 I do. I feel yeah. I need to. So um, getting lunch with somebody at a certain time. I'm sure I know other people could relate to this um, on all different versions of the levels, but like I am aware I want to, I know I might want to not want to later, but like let's talk about it the day of and which is difficult for other people's schedules. Mine is more flexible than, than others may be. So what I have accepted is that like everything isn't a contract. Mm -hmm. Like if I need to get out of it, yeah, I can. And when it shows up, I know I probably won't, but like, Making commitments to things, knowing, Rick, you're not going to go to jail if you don't do this. And I think a relationship is also that. The idea is we want to be together forever, not because forever is the goal, but because you want this thing to work. And if it doesn't, it doesn't. But like knowing that just because you commit to some commitment doesn't mean, you know, you're moving to another planet. Commitment just means you're deciding on something, but but everything is fluid. Doctor. Yes, and that, I would say, is the definition of modern monogamy. A lot of people who are monogamous don't see their freedom anymore. You're talking about, like, I'm so committed, I'll do my best, but if it doesn't work out, oh well. There's a lot of people that there's no oh well. I know it's, I know it's hyperbole, but, like, it's not oh well. It's not, it's fuck, No, fuck, sorry, fuck, sorry, fuck, of fuck. course. But what I mean is, like, there's people that go, I don't have a choice, right? This is, I have committed and now I'm in it forever. And there's a lot of people that view monogamy that way. And that, I think can make people feel uncomfortable. And I don't think that's always healthy either. That it's, was Yeah, it's putting your decision and the decision of the relationship and your partner's decision in the hands of a God or a, a, an ideal, like something that is outside of you. Like she had told me that divorce is not an option. Now, I think I knew what she meant uh, then. Now I have an understanding of what she meant. But even then, I also very literal and and very like, 
pragmatic with things, especially that matter. And like, I wouldn't want to get divorced either. I mean, thank God divorce. I, I was divorced. Thank God divorce is an you option. You were divorced? Yeah. Really? Yeah. Wow. But you think about- a doctor. Oh, gotcha. No, but think First about studying. Like, I got married so young. Imagine if that was like, well, now you, <laughs> now you got to do it till you die. That's a horrifying feeling. And I think you know people make decisions all the time. I'm not saying you should get married without thinking about things, and you shouldn't give your marriage a try. But what I mean is, like, sometimes it doesn't work. If you want to play piano and get good at piano, it's a big commitment. Um, if you don't want to have to take piano lessons for ten years, twice a week and say, I'm not going to start piano, then you're not going to even have an opportunity. But you could commit to the piano, start taking lessons. And if it turns out that's not your instrument or you don't want to do it, you could leave. Mm -hmm. The problem is the piano teacher doesn't have an investment in that the same way you do. So when you have two people, like also I know people don't like getting out of relationships because they're going to hurt the other person. Mm -hmm. mm. Do you want to get married? I don't know. I mean, even just talking about it is giving me a little bit of anxiety. I mean, even the idea of like living in a house with somebody, building a life with somebody, having it become mundane and not having the turbulence makes me feel like I'm not a unified. It, I feel like there's a loss of autonomy there and not even autonomy, but like you were saying, like vibrancy. Um and all, I just, yeah, the vitality. idea, vitality, yeah. Like the idea of just being like, are you going to take out the trash? I did it last week. Really freaks me out. And remind me trash, trash. <laughs> and, um, yeah, I mean, I almost want the only people I would trust to be in a relationship with are people who are one foot out the door because that's what I believe to be like, that's like what I think is the most, the, the most desirable way to live your life because it's so finite is to be with somebody who's like at any moment I could go and start a whole new chapter, a whole new adventure without you because there's only one life and I'm not going to compromise for one that I don't want to be in. Like that's the kind of person I'm attracted to because that's what I almost believe in. You know what I think is so hot in relationships? What? Freedom of choice. And I say yeah. that like it's, I think when you're in a relationship, you want the other person constantly reevaluating the relationship. Mm. Yes. As in does this work for me? Does it work for us? Mm -hmm. And so many people are scared of that process. I think that's the only way to make a relationship feel like a constant choice. Yes. What I I think relationships die when it stops being a choice. It's like we're obligated, we're committed. And again, I'm monogamous. I like commitment. That's the way I function. I've always been in very committed relationships. But when it's like you're committed in a sense of you're trapped, I think that's when people feel uncomfortable. That's because we believe it's like relationship versus autonomy, freedom. But it's like, how do you introduce autonomy and freedom in your relationship? And one of the ways is like acknowledging that your partner has a choice to be with you or not every single day. And that's scary. But I also think it's really liberating. It's like, they're still here. They actually today woke up and were like, I still choose you. ABD, always be dating. <laughs> always be dating. Oh, is that a thing? I mean, I just think it's like it went, if you when you're courting somebody, you're trying. And on the receiving end, if you feel like your partner isn't trying, it's just at least it's not attractive. Yes, yes, that's true. And yeah. that's where I think compromising is so important because compromising is courting. It is trying. It is like, hey, you matter to me. But then when you start compromising your own boundaries and your own uh, uh, safety, that's a different thing. But I do think that like, I like wearing shorts and sweatpants. Yep. Um, I think that's okay <laughs> most of the time. And I will get in a relationship with somebody and have that conversation with that somebody. At the beginning of that relationship, I wear sweatpants a lot. Do you feel that will be a problem? I also talk about my farting. I fart a lot. Is that something that you don't have to think it's funny? It's bad beneficial but like are are you grossed up by farting because if so it's not going to be possible that being said when we go places if it's with her friends and or if you're going out i will put on jeans and hate it i've never seen you no in way. proper I pants i can't even imagine well um with all due respect um <laughs> i'm not courting you guys yeah uh, i see um, <laughs> but like i don't want to put on certain pants and she might not even care but the fact that I'm doing it feels like a compromise to me, hmm. whether she asks it or but not. But that's not a negative feeling to you for to have a compromise. I For a lot of people, it feels like very bad. I, f I want to tell you an anecdote. Okay. Antidote. 
Anecdotes, what you drink. Anecdote. An- you want to tell me an anecdote. anecdote? Anecdote. Yeah. This show is sponsored by BetterHelp. Now, if you have been watching this episode, I think you might have an idea of how important therapy is, at least to us. And if you don't have the luxury of being able to talk to Sarah all the time, here's what I suggest. BetterHelp. I've been in therapy for a while and listen, I love it. It's become a big part of the podcast. It helps me recognize patterns of my behavior when I'm triggered, not only recognizing it faster, but also what reactions I have and how I could stop and calm down and understand, oh, this is making me feel this way because of this. Understanding why it makes you feel a certain way doesn't necessarily fix the feeling, but it does help you kind of categorize why you feel that way. Also, sometimes you talk to friends and they have their perspective, but having a professional who's able to find what responsibility you have in it. I've learned how to communicate better and I've just gotten more tools to help me both interact socially with other people as well as just kind of being able to self-regulate my own emotions and my own anxieties and sadnesses, et cetera. So find your bright spot this season with BetterHelp. Visit betterhelp.com slash Tyso for 10% off your first month. That's betterhelp, H-E-L-P dot com slash Tyso. I didn't do great in school. I ended up going to a special school. Really? For troubled people. And in that school, they didn't have books past pre-algebra. I'm a little more advanced than that. So I did my work quickly and the teacher had asked me to help some of the other kids. And I was, when I helped other people, even in school, I was able to do something that I felt I couldn't even do on my own. Uh, Because I don't know, I wanted them to think I was valuable. That made me feel valuable, whatever it may have been. I noticed that helping other people, and I don't mean this in the most selfless Christian act, but like doing, collaborating, made me better and made me feel valuable. So I like giving in a certain way where I feel like I could make your day easier. I could make things better for you. I could save you money. I could teach you something, whatever it may be. Those compromises, I don't want to wear pants, but like if it makes you feel better, that makes me, I don't like wearing pants, makes me feel bad. I have have value to offer, makes me feel good. I don't know, I don't I don't quantify them that way, but like, I also know that I receive that way too. And if like you're, you don't want to offer value to me in whatever that might look like, that does feel like I'm not being considered. Hmm. Um, and I also recognize everybody doesn't feel that way. Right. There's a lot of people that feel like if they, if they are going out of their way to make your life better, then they're altering their sure. trajectory. And if, and if you need to change who you are, for me to have a better life and happy, then I'm putting too much expectation on you. But it's, right, it's right, right, nice, right. like, if, if we all go to a movie and, and then you're like, oh, fuck, I forgot to get treats. And I pull out, I have, you, I, I have a treat that I got from, they don't even have it here, it's your favorite treat. It was money for me, I had to go drive somewhere to get it, but I, can, I thought about you. And like, that's a nice thing. But if you're like, where's my fucking treats? It's like, it's not my job to get you treats. It's like, no, 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 no. You know what I mean? Yes. That's I- what I mean by that. But that's really sweet. And also other people don't show love that way. So what happens is you're like, I thought of you. I came prepared. I think this is really cute. I love you. Here's gummy bears. And then they don't reciprocate. And then you go, why don't they love me? And I think that's Mm -hmm. an an issue. (laughs) As in Mm -hmm. like, sometimes we take on roles that are not ours and that's okay. And sometimes that's really sweet. But if that becomes like a habit in a relationship and then you're like, they don't even acknowledge the role I've taken on, then we start to resent them for something they didn't even ask us to do. So like, you're like, oh my God, like I drove so far to get you this brand of something. And she just said, thanks. Well, that, that's the thing. That's, that's a different mindset. Yeah. Like, um, my buddy, uh, shout out to David Sullivan said this to me once. And, uh, I think about it all the time. Um, I got out of a relationship a long time ago. It was a hard one. And I wanted to tell her something. I don't even remember what it was. But I remember I wanted like, I wanted her to know this thing. It might have been a, a logistical thing of your boxes are here. I don't know what it was. Um, I'm like, I, I don't know if I should contact her. And David said, what, well, why are you doing it? I said, I want her to know this thing. And he goes, as long as there's not you don't have expectations Mm. of what she's going to send back. Like she might not send anything back. Are you okay with that? And I think about that. 
I think about that probably the most now when I'm reaching out to book people for the podcast because it's such a vulnerable, difficult thing when like you keep asking. Mm. And it's like, do I need them to do it? Am I okay if they say no? Am I okay if they don't respond? And I am, but checking that helps me better mitigate. Mm. Like if I'm, if you send something and then you're waiting for something, don't send the thing. Mm. So if I'm giving you mm. something for you to say, to applaud, that's, you're setting yeah, yourself Ian, up. Ian Fidan's podcast bought, our friend Luke Moniz they, dinner the other day. Together. We have a podcast. Bought him dinner, and then I went and got this muffin, and I gave a half of it to Luke, who was hungry. And then Ian goes, "Give me, give me some." And Luke was like, "No, she gave it to me." And he goes, "I bought you dinner last night." And I was like, "You can't do this. You can't mm-hmm. do that." And he was like, "You're right. That's actually fair. That's really fair." So that, yeah, I mean, I, yes, and I definitely, I mean, luckily my love language if you will is not acts of kindness because i think if it yeah (laughs) truly i think that if it was then i'd be like where's my where's the but it's also mine is mine is like time spent together and i've realized that because the person i'm dating like needs a lot of space i have to be like it when he gives me a lot of time together that is like that is like a gift to me and I need to also yeah. give space as a gift to him, which is hard because it's a incompatible weird thing. But it does, if I, f- if I turn it like that where I'm like, I'm doing a nice thing for him by leaving, backing off because we just spent three d- days straight together and now I will fucking, you know, mm. if I think about it that way, it's a lot, that has become a lot easier because it used to be like we'd spend three days together and then he'd kind of pull back and reduce contact and I would be like, well, we just were so close and now we're not close at all. We just Sounds spent like all this together. You, that's the woman needing to be aware of the man's menstrual cycle. Okay. Yes, is that fair? yes, yes. That is <laughs> how fourth, it feels. Every fourth day. Every I, fourth day, you gotta, they gotta, yeah. The, the, mon- the food thing, I, I, have a, I have a friend, this was a while ago, but at the time I was working, thus making a little bit of money and he wasn't. Um, and we would do stuff and I would go to, we'd go to in and out a lot. And I would always buy. It's not that expensive. And it was my, pl- I didn't think anything of it. Um, then there was a time, maybe it was the eighth time in a row, whatever it would be, where like he didn't offer to pay. And it made me feel like not only am I paying for it, I'm expected to. Mm. Um, and I didn't say anything. I just paid for it. And I was like, hmm. And then later I thought about him, like, I feel like I should say something. And because um, I also was like, well, I'm paying for it. He's just taking it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So is he doing anything wrong? I both felt like he is, but also he wasn't. Like, I mm. felt like I wanted him to be doing something different, but he wasn't, but also that. So the next time we went, I said before he ordered, um, not only did I not say that, I could have said, hey, I'm not going to pay for you this time, but I didn't say that. I said, hey, uh, I want you to get get this this time. I said, I want you to get it. And he goes, okay, absolutely. I was like, oh, good. But like, I don't know what your take is on that, but I uh, I know that the alternative would have been to not say anything and then say, hey, can I get your credit card so we could split it? And I just felt that would have been, I don't know if that's passive aggressive, but like because I'm aware of something that's going to be a break in the pattern and this person wasn't and I waited until the last minute to let them be aware of it, I felt like I need to say it. I don't know if that's the right thing or if I did it in the right timing, but I do know that I felt resentful for one payment. For so sure. I didn't want that to happen. That's a again. lot of payments. Eight? You got to eight? He got two burgers. It's eight bucks a time. I'm working. He's not. Yeah. It, it's nothing. It wasn't the money. If he were to say, hey, I just want, if he were to have said that time, hey, listen, you keep paying for it. Like, I could I get it this time or you don't have to? Let's split it. I may have said, sure. Um, I would have definitely the one resen- the one time I noticed it. But there's a great chance of being like, no, don't worry about it. That's the acknowledgement I'm talking about. And I would have maybe spoken to them not in that situation, meaning like you don't wait next time. Yeah, you don't go too in and out. What if they didn't have the money to pay for both your burgers? Or what if like it it made it probably awkward to be like, hey, we're here. I'm making this really explicit. You're paying for me right now. I think I would have been like, hey, I really don't mind. But I feel like there's a weird dynamic developing where you're expecting me to do this. And I, I really don't mind doing this. But now that you're expecting it, it feels a little weird. And I don't want it to get resentful. So let's figure out how we want to move adult, forward. I, I would have done that yeah. now. That was my first time learning. Like, but yeah, I would have just been like, yeah. you want to go to In-N-Out in and out first, out. let me say. Let's go to In-N-Out, but let me just say. I may, I, 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 maybe I'm being defensive. I probably didn't even, it wasn't that deep. I probably didn't think about it until we decided to go again. But knowing what I know now, it probably would have been um, after, once it happened, it might not have been right away, but like 
Hey, I want to talk to you about something. I really want burgers now. Yeah. I know, same. So and hungry. a Kit Kat. I want all of those Slide things. Dog, um, I have, no. <laughs> we have, uh, I have a chocolate croissant. We have to uh, dub Cut out the for- chewing. Oh, I think I can. Do you, you want a Kinder Bar? I've been chewing a little sugar inside you Let me see what. what are you, oh, don't wake him up. <gasps> okay, Please he's a baby. Pass. He's a baby. He's just so cute. I know. I like cannot. Let me hear the Hello, will you love me forever? Will you love me forever? That's what I should get as a dog. Even the dog isn't interested in me now that I've told it I want to love it forever. I'll never let you go. Don't look at him. He won't love you forever. I'll love you forever. This apartment is so cool. Isn't it? Yeah. Do you need me to turn the AC off? No. John Michael, she said this apartment is so cool. Make sure that's subtitled so the people at home understand the joke where I talk about the AC. They'll fucking freak. You're one of the few people I know that will wear somebody's dirty shirt that they just met, but will also wash their hands after a pee. Well, if he had seemed like a dirty guy, I might not have even taken the shirt with my OCD, but because my OCD is all about juju. No offense. I'm taken. I am able to wear something if I like the person. Right, that's kind of like why how my mom will pick up the cat poop with her hand because she loves the cat. Right. <gasps> It's awful. No, I'm like such a germaph- I'm very germaphobe. You weren't saying anything racist. No. You're like, I'm a germ. Mm-hmm. I know. I'm a germ P word. I'm like really germaphobic. Yeah, I think phobe can sometimes, in this modern day and age, phobe when you say it. Yeah. You'd be like, oh, did I, I don't just. I like germs. She was, didn't want to be What about germ to germs? and chocolate? I love germ and chocolate. Well, let's get that microphone a little closer to you. I want to. S- I'm going to spend Christmas in Germany, so that's the German chocolate. Hi, baby. I'm sorry. Who's just, in Germany? No one. I just want to be in Berlin for Christmas. I think it'll be fun. For, for uh, Berlin for Christmas? Yeah. Sounds like a nice By Hallmark yourself? movie. No. Oh. I'm going with a bunch of friends and my partner, and it's just, I think, going to be nice. It hasn't been confirmed yet, but I think it'll be a good time. A lot of my friends live kind of all, all across the world, um, and so I have friends coming in from London, from Sydney. Um, it'll be nice. Now, when you say partner, yeah, oh. is it a woman? No, sorry, no. it's a man. I know. Why do you I, apologize? Uh, do you feel it'd be better if you were gay? <laughs> Are you a heterophobe? No, I just think I confuse people. I, I just like the word partner better. I do too. Yeah. I'm not that I like it better. I like the term. It reminds you of the role. This isn't my thing. This is yeah. my partner. Yeah, I really, I like the part. But no, it's a man. And girlfriend feels very rough. I like girlfriend too. This is, I'm a girlfriend. Oh. But I think sometimes it's just, it, it, it feels so. I know you probably know, but of just. Of course, I'm not going to give him chocolate. <laughs> I did grow up with dogs, so we're good. Are they all dead? Exactly. No, one of them's still alive, actually. Out of how many? <laughs> yeah. Um, how many dogs did you have? Like three. A whole team so you killed two? Huskies. You killed two dogs? Wiggy, come here. She's going to kill. <gasps> Wiggy. Oh, you're so mean. <laughs> Wiggy. Oh my God, he listens to you. Look at him, he's got to take the The only person that does. Let's right. see if he can make the jump. Somebody's got Don't it. Don't help him, let's see if he can do it. I think you do it. You think? Oh yeah, Wiggy. Watch this too. Wiggy, nice. Wiggy, up here on this. Yeah. <laughs> it's crazy. Awkward. Mm. Oh, sometimes you just want to fuck I know, up. it's the same, this, the, rage, the rage chemicals that go off in your brain are the same as the cute ones, isn't that crazy? That, that's why headphones are, are helpful. People will already comment from that. Timestamp. <laughs> <laughs> the worst part of the podcast. There, I did a podcast once where you're supposed to eat on it the whole time. What was it's, that? What? I don't remember. I think it went down in flames, but <laughs> yeah, I, I took to it like a fish to water. I That's ate the good. whole time. I never stopped. I would really enjoy that. Mm-hmm. Gulp. Yeah, like now I'm just gulp. hearing the gulps. We edited that out. <laughs> we put Ali Mikovsky gulps in. Shout out to Ali Mikovsky and her gulps. Does she have big gulps? Well, I mean, you know, they're a handful. This feels like a sleepover. Like, I, I hope my feet don't bother you. You know, no, this no. when I bring my podcast in the road, technically it is. It must have looked is. like it did because I just went. Well, yeah, I was like, like <laughs> they're clean, clean socks. This is called the sleepover series. Oh, yeah. Wearing a shirt that somebody gave me randomly. 
but also at that same mall that I performed in, bought a new pair of socks because I can't wear the same socks two days and I wasn't sleeping in my house. Do you have a joke that could um, let sorry, Doctor Sarah understand what type of like ty- type of style you have? I I've definitely watched her stuff. Oh, what's your favorite joke of hers? Could you perform it? No, I can't perform it, but I did. Guys. I did look at a couple lengths before. Oh my god! Oh my god! Zoom in on the dog. Zoom in on the dog, please. Let's just hear at the dog for the rest of the time. Oh, um, it's, it's insane. I, I will fuck that little dog's head up. I will fuck it. I will put my penis in that little dog's ear. I will rip its nose off and dunk it right into my asshole. I will, I will squeeze its little eyeballs with my hands. Hey, did you notice those things on the wall? Aren't they really nice? Really nice. <laughs> 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 um, to, to let to, what you want a joke to let her know. Explain like if this were like a a job interview, if she needed somebody to do some jokes for her patients. Okay, the one joke that probably describes me most accurately is um, I'm on a lot of Prozac for depression uh, and OCD for bi- for yeah bipolar and OCD, and um, I can't come on Prozac. It's very difficult to come. Is it also difficult for you to talk into the mic while you're facing her? It's at really her. hard. There you go. Hello. Hi. Um, so it's funny, and you know, and I go on about not being able to come, and I say, I well, got go on. Don't, hey, don't, hey, don't hey, worry hey, about hey, it. Let us hear it. I don't want to get into that, <laughs> but it has to do with the oak tree from Pocahontas. Okay. And uh, anyway, Put I can't up come. dates here. I can't come, and I got off Prozac for a little bit, and then I could come, but I had to do it in multiples of three, or my moms would die. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you so much. See that That's lets really you know good. that I'm mentally ill and have lesbian moms, um, and that you're smart, and that I've have a oak, I have a worn out, tired vagina, and a degree in philosophy. Apparently, oh yes, I do have a degree in philosophy. That's amazing. And you said, and you, did you study existential therapy or existentialism? Or both? existential psychoanalysis is like my specialization, which is Freud. Mm, no, it, it's just they use the word analysis as a type of existential therapy. And what it, what classifies existential therapy? Um, it's rooted in existential philosophy in terms of like the so it's a modality. It's how we perceive human suffering and human progress and human healing. And so we look at things like responsibility, death, meaninglessness, all the staples in philosophy. I mean, like, yeah. It's, it's, Have you ever heard of uh, Dennett? Daniel Dennett? Is it Dennett? Somebody who wrote about that everything that we do is based around the idea that we just die. Mm. Who is that? I think it's Dennett. I don't know. It's, it's pretty cool. It's like it, it just is basically that all all of our biological imperatives or like all humans are constantly preoccupied with the idea that they're going to die. And even though we don't talk about it. Like I think everything. death is so liberating and not in the sense that I want to die now, but yeah. it's like we all kind of like, like my cup. Kind of like uh, m- uh, modern um, start over monogamy. today. But it's like you're going to die. So use it like the consequences at the end of the day. Is- you push that. Uh, it's hanging off. I'm so sorry. No, but it's OK. Oh, my God. Of existentialism. That coffee was about to die. <laughs> <laughs> Throw itself off a cliff. I think as someone who takes life very seriously, um, it's like a nice reminder that ultimately I should just like enjoy it and that we're all going to die. And if all you're working towards is an end goal, um, that's irrevelant. You need to enjoy the process of getting As to Aero that goal. Smith said, "Life's a journey." Life's a journey. Said, I, don't miss a journey a thing. Not the I mean, very phenomenological. I love it. I yeah. So it's, Dude, I think what about death Nietzsche's is comforting. whole thing where he's like, you should basically act as if you're going to be reincarnated into yourself and live the exact same life again. Like that's how you should live. I always thought that was interesting. It's also spoiler alert. Spoiler alert. A movie. So the movie about time. Oh my god, we talked about it last time. Mm-hmm. This is oh, like really? your go-to movie. <laughs> Just that was what we. Yeah. About. Like if you could do it again, and then once you realize you're doing it, what's that? I said I have a post about that. Did that? What was the post? It was something like, "Live your life in such a way that if you had a chance, you'd do it again." I mean, not like that, but it's like I think it's that sense of responsibility of like, what if you were going to come back on Earth again? But then at the same time, it's like make sure you utilize it and love it so that you'd want to do it. But I think responsibility Mm. and pleasure is a really hard combo for people to comprehend. So they either lean into pleasure or responsibility. What about if you must masturbate once a day? That's fine. That's both pleasure and responsibility. (laughs) Right. (laughs) Wow, you just solved it. (laughs) Yeah. A lot of times it's just the language of changing and to or that makes us think something's more plausible. Like, for example, I never would need a ginge and ale. 
You know what I mean? Mm. I would mm. take a ginger ale. Yeah. We'll be right back. And we're back. I prefer just a ginger. Sure. Like Keep a redhead? Ale. Hold the ale. Yeah. A sober redhead. It's hard to find a redhead without a bunch of ale in them, you know. Okay. All right. Well, it is a very, <laughs> like, you know, Scottish type of thing. To it is. I pointed to a guy last night in the audience and I was like, you work at a brewery. And he was like, I do. And he was a bald guy with a big red beard. And I just knew it by looking at What's his, his Instagram? Shout him out. I don't know. It's Are you ever my... wrong when you do things like that? Mm. Imagine she always guesses the person. Yeah, that'd profession. be amazing. <laughs> no, last night there was a woman there that I guessed. I mean, she was dressed like a t- toddler. Real, and I guess that she was a um, kindergarten puppeteer teacher? Oh. that she'd put on puppet shows. And she was a supply chain person. Oh. So, and I was like, that's as far off as I could have possibly So been. you were guessing um, that she was coming from work wearing her puppeteering costume. I was guessing, yeah, that she taught improv, that she was some sort of performer with puppets. Go, go, go. I said that... What, you know, I'm a big puppet guy now. Oh, my God. Are you really? <laughs> yeah. Hashtag me and my puppet Rick. I've been traveling literally the world with my puppet. Where is it? Um, I have it here. No, you don't. Yes, I do. Can I see him? Um, look at the dog, though. What does he look like? Does he look like you? Uh, yeah. Really? Yeah, I'll show it to you off camera because I don't. People who come to see me, of course, they can see it on Instagram. But let me show you. Yeah. Okay. Um, you could ask how old she is now if you want. How old are you? I'm really curious what you think I would do for a living if you just met me in my painter suit. <laughs> Change tires. I would think. I wish I was that cool. That you were. You met me today, so I thought I'd ask. I would think that you were, um, you worked in, in television, but off camera. Like oh, you were, rude. Wow. Jesus. Yeah, off like camera. Were, I you, can't make it well, on the camera. Very, that... Well, the camera people are a little, you know yeah. what I mean? A little, a little, mm-hmm. you know, mm-hmm. and okay. you seem self-possessed, but also aware of, you know, your, oh my God. Thank you. Yes. He's so cute. Look at him. Look at that little vest. Are you serious? Or I mean, it's here. <laughs> I, I thought that this was a bit the whole time. Here's something that I feel a lot of people don't understand. And I've said this to you. Bits and sincerity are not mutually exclusive. Wait, how, what have you been doing with that on stage? I'm a puppet act. Wait, 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 wait. Can you, can you ventriloquist? Of course. I mean, that's really none of your business. But what I can and can't do isn't, it doesn't define me. I saw it for the first time in L.A. like six weeks ago, and that was a pretty funny bit. Yeah. What do you do? I enjoyed thing? it. Um, what were you doing for the audio only people? Uh, showing it, jer- sucking your dick. No. <laughs> no, I, um, I'm a prop comic now. Nice. You know, um, a lot of times people talking about um, getting, uh, you know, our love and validation from somebody else and everyone having different lung languages and expectations. Lung language? A lot of people. Is that like tube and throat singing? That's a long language. Have you ever heard tube and throat singing? I'm really not hearing much of a difference of your actual voice in that. <coughs> that just sounds like you. Yeah. Um, instead of uh, trying to get our validation and props from the audience, um, to you know, a lot of people want cheers to give them props. Uh, I just bring my own props. <laughs> wow, clever. Why are I also those do words, puns. Go ahead. Why are those words correlated? Props and props. Oh, because you're propping somebody up with a prop. And a prop also props an act up by being a prop. Got it. And a propos- all about proposition propping. is the position of being proposed. Propped up. Yes. <gasps> Who's your little fucking baby? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, rub those little ears. Mm. Just rip them off and put them on a keychain and sell them. Let's do something <laughs> cute again. Wait. Oh, I'm gonna fucking oh stick his little Come tail here. inside of his little butthole. Hey, watch this. Watch this. <gasps> That's so cute. Oh, it's adorable. It's adorable. I love that. Oh. Show him the little butt swirls. Look at those things. Those are very those are good luck. See those butt swirls? Mark this moment. Um, I want to do something where we do like before. Hopefully, it's in frame where we open Wiggy's mouth and have him yelling the way I often yell. Um, so uh, uh, this will be his voice. <laughs> no, not that. <laughs> Ooh, 
Isn't it weird that today... Like I'm just like doing my job right now, watching I think you. About that all. Like the time. I'm just, my eyes are on you while you're going. Oh, you're and and that that's my job. I think about it's it. So all weird. The time. If somebody told me if they were like, I'm going to give you a glimpse, you only have a three second glimpse into your future, <laughs> and I'm 11 years old, and they show you. I think I would be okay with it, which is really nice, but I would be so confused. I've said that multiple times with Adam. Do you know Adam Ray? No. Oh, he's so funny. But my, one of my good friends, Adam Ray, he's been on my podcast now 15 times. Wow. And we, almost all of them, we get not just high, but stoned. And it's just where he's doing a solo podcast and I'm doing a solo podcast. And every now and then we meet up, but we're there together. There's just so many bits and talking. And I oftentimes think about like, like imagine me in, in high school being like, I wonder what I'm going to be doing when I get older. Or, or people that went to high school with me, like, I wonder what Rick's doing now. And just like and the, the wave, diarrhea. Yeah. And it's like, do, 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 do. yeah. This is kind of similar for you. This you, is not my job, and I'm watching you. Whimper but you have like other that. people do that. You, you you're there while other people are going, ooh, 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 and you go like, "Listen, everyone is gonna die." Fine liberation. Are we supposed <laughs> to just deal with this level it's, of cuteness and just live? Look how There's he does. no way. Look, look how he snuggles. It's, it's not normal. I know. There's something going on with him. He's not. I want it. I feel like my look girlfriend should teach a class on how to raise a perfect dog. Look at his little arms hanging out there. He doesn't care. He doesn't mind the sweater. He loves it. Well, he's an author. Ah, uh, publisher. Editor. Yeah. I think he's an editor. Well, Look at we're, bo we're both are. Speaking of authors. Um, oh, we have a doctor here. Doctor, here's a couple. I got a couple questions for you. Do you read? Yes. Um, well, we got to send you a copy of It's On Me. <gasps> have you read it, Rick? No. I told yeah. you I'm not going to, but I'm going to download the, um, the audio. Mm, likely story. I am. Okay. Right Why, now. I, I, what do you think I understand about if you feel that I'm not interested. I sincerely am, and it'll be on my plane ride. See, but if I if I don't say, okay. No, yeah. you're feeling really bad joking. about it. I was joking. No, I no, actually okay. wasn't. We'll edit around this. Don't worry. What do you think about uh, trauma? The body keeps the score. Yeah, you correct. Like that? You like that book? You yeah. You talked about tingly fingers. We have, um, I think about, you mean the way it was written? Do I like the concept? Do I agree with his theory? Yeah. Yeah, I think it was interesting. I read it a while back. So, but I, I think he talked about something that we all needed to understand that wasn't super um, mainstream. And I think he made this really important concept mainstream. And that is that your body is a participant and your body stores all your experiences we need to pay attention. And especially if you're someone recovering from trauma, you can't ignore your body in that process. So as someone who was, was, is a trauma expert, I think that that was a really great read for everyone. And I would recommend it to clients. Mm. We talked about this on our previous podcast, which you should check out. People are freaking for it. But could you give another example? Uh, it could be one from you or something that you've heard about of something that when something that your body is telling you and when, when to pay it proper attention. Yeah, I get headaches when I don't want to do things. <gasps> she got a headache before she did. Yes, this. you oh, did. Yes. You got you you got you a Tylenol right before this. Now, does not wanting to do something mean that it's best that you don't? No. Um, also, that's not what happens to me. Um, uh, what is something else? Hey, huh? Finally. I know. Good job. I know. <laughs> yes, I did it. Um, you know what I've noticed? You become a. Pardon the term insecure. I mean that quite definitively, not as a character trait. No, I'm saying like you feel the need to say, just kidding, because you you don't know that I know that. And I what I'm noticing is those are more so when your jokes are self-deprecating. You want me to know that you're joking. But if they're an aggressive, if it's like a joke about me. Are you calling me aggressive? Um, no, okay. I'm just kidding. You're aggressive. If you the, are aggressive. If the joke it's is at good. somebody else's expense, you don't feel the need to say just kidding as much. Like just now you're like, oh, I didn't oh. want to do this. Oh. Oh. Wiggy, mommy's home. When you make a joke about you, you're like, I'm just kidding. I didn't mean that. Like, oh, you didn't read my book. I'm just kidding. But when it's like, oh, Rick, you give me a headache podcasting with you. You didn't feel the need to say I'm just kidding. I think you're reading into it. I she think she also it's did say that's not something that happened to me. Remember? Mm -hmm. She said that's not something that happens to me. That's her saying just kidding. Yeah. Clarify. I think I'm just trying not Which to say it on this podcast. Because you said it a lot. She read I the comments, Rick. She read the comments. I read said so you, many comments. They all said that she's wet for you, dude. Now she's got to be hard. Okay. I don't I know mean, what not, that means. I didn't mean hard like a penis. <laughs> there's too much There's too much in the world right now about sexuality and, and, and gender identity 
that even okay. as a joke, you, what you're fine. doing is is, is the problem. They and all, if I don't say something about it. They all said it, that she is attracted to you, no, so now she has to be mean. Stop it. Okay. The point is, reading comments does what? It makes for a bad day for you and me. Right. That's assumptions. Oh. It's, it's not something that is done. Thank you. By people who want to live a long life. Authors don't have to read comments. Um, the reason why I said just kidding was because I didn't actually want you to feel bad about not reading my book. It had nothing to do with self-deprecation. I don't know how to read. I know. And also... Except for this. <laughs> I could nosh. Classic Jewish recipes you're van for every day by Jay Cohen. Hitting us with that hard Cohen. Nice. Yeah. Did you ever think about putting pictures in your book to get more engagement? No. What's your cover? It's a mirror. And he it says it's it's on me. It's There's a, a mirror in the middle. Oh, so you your philosophy is like you're getting do you have like the my my mom's used to take the landmark education. Have you heard of that? No. It's like a cultish thing, but their whole thing was like if you have beef with somebody, it's because of something that you're benefiting from getting it. So not letting it go isn't that person's responsibility, but it's your own. I do think if you can't let it go, it's your responsibility. And it, but is that what that title refers to? It's on me. It's it's about taking responsibility for your own life and figuring out who you are and why you're here. What if you're like, I know that there's no reason I'm here. I'm just a, I'm just an ant marching along. If that's how you want to live your life, and that makes you comfortable. Sure. Yeah. You mean like your brother or sister has a kid? No, no. Sorry, sorry. I'm so sorry, Rick. Um, the in, there's an insect with six with six legs, three on each side, and there's a torso, a head, and a butt. To be, to be perverse about it. So you're it. saying you want four more appendages? I think it'd be nice. I think I could get a lot more done. I think I could find a lot more And that's what life. it is. Maybe you would have more meaning if you, if you at least felt like you got more done. So what is it that you feel that you're not doing? <laughs> I can see the top of your whole mouth. <laughs> I, I, just I know. Saw, I it's so much there. tongue today. I just is feel like... It. Is that what we're, is that, this is called? Absolutely. Well it's done, doctor. It's like tongue depression. Okay. Interesting. So what is it that you feel like you could be doing more of? Oh, good question. Exercising, sleeping. I don't sleep very much. I think you would benefit by more exercise and sleep. I could just tell that physically. <laughs> what else? By cutting out toxic people in my life. <laughs> right. But can you do that? Because then you won't be seen. <sighs> 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 do you ever have issues in your relationship, doctor? No. No? How could anyone have issues with me? If you're like dating. A, we never know when you're joking. Could you diagnose her with something publicly? What do you think about the borderline diagnosis? It exists. It exists. Mm -hmm. I've been feeling really, I've, I've been reading a lot about it because I have uh, what they call complex PTSD. Mm -hmm. which is PTSD. Sorry, it's medical. Which is? Can you explain it to me? It means complex PTSD. Uh, okay. Po PT. Complex post-traumatic stress disorder. Thank you. Um, now, correct me if I'm wrong, doctor. Doctor, doctor. Uh, when somebody has borderline personality disorder, is it best to not diagnose them before they kind of discover this, and you help guide them realize it themselves? Why would you say that? <laughs> I'm curious. That's what I read. Okay. Have you heard anything like this? I think diagnosis in general um, dangerous thing. can be infringing on someone's sense of identity. Mm -hmm. um, I think they can, it really depends where the client is at. For some, it offers so much comfort and understanding. Um, and for some, it's an imposition and... Imposition because now they feel they have, they now have to become or they have been something they didn't know. Exactly. I mean, bipolar disorders like Robin Williams has that. Jim Carrey has that. Every comedian is fine with having that. Borderline is like a herpes diagnosis. It's like something you feel like you and have you to let partners sexually, know. Right? Yes. You know what I mean? It's yeah. like basically, and people think of borderline as girls who are like, I'll kill myself if you don't call me back kind of thing. And it's related to complex PTSD, which I'm sure could just be called borderline. But complex PTSD, if I'm not mistaken, is where bad things happen to you. We're constantly abandoned. So every time you're with somebody, you're worried. It went, and they pull away a little bit. It feels like a calamity, which is very closely related to borderline, right? The only thing that feels different about it is I don't, I think borderline, they have the. Wait, what you just explained is borderline. Is that differ from anxious attachment? When they go away, you, it feels stronger. Is that, those are different things. Well, one is like an extreme, like you, an, a borderline person will either be anxiously attached or like a switch, I think. 
because they might also do the thing where they're like, get away from me, it's over, it's done. But it's oh, so extreme. It's going back and forth between attachment and avoidance. You right. can have avoidant, anxious avoidant attachment. As one. I, like that is your attachment. You you go between the two. Right. So is that CPTSD? No, anxious avoidant attachment would be like the second, the sec like I, I think I have a friend with it, and it's like They'll break up, right? And she'll be like, I'm done with you. This relationship's bad. And the second he goes, okay, that's right. all right. We can move on. She flips out into the stratosphere. Is that so is that atta- anxious attachment or is that just being a woman? <laughs> I had to do it just for my male audience. I don't really feel that way. Anyway, I also have a female friends that are avoidance and those are the most attractive people in the world. The women who think that they are better off on their own. That tracks for me that you would think but that. But avoidant yeah. individuals don't actually think, they don't want to be alone. Right. Like mm-hmm. regardless of your attachment, no one wants to be alone. They just have different ways of trying to get what they want. Um, and so even avoiding attachment. OK. Whoa. What was that? The flower wanting to get more light. What do you mean? The flower. Wanted, we all want light. Some stay exactly as they or are. Or attention and acknowledgement. The flower wanted acknowledgement. The flower is Rick. I think the flower and Rick you, oh. is all of us. <laughs> I'll get onto that. No, it's beautiful now. Wow. Oh. It shed Poor its, its support. Yeah. Ooh, it doesn't need to be propped up no. anymore. But you know, sometimes we need support like a cast. Did you hear but what I said? It doesn't need to be propped up. And it, thank you. But at a certain point, um, we need to, uh, to strengthen or stabilize our muscles so we can, as you said earlier, doctor, hold ourselves up. Um, but as, will you continue on with, with, with what you're saying? I have no idea what I was saying. <clears throat> this is so stressful to me. Just Why? demanding. I know. Doesn't it feel really demanding? I mean, you're showing me nothing, but I say, yeah. yeah that's nothing. <laughs> do that. <laughs> laugh. Do do laugh it. at me. I, it's those. It's like those plaques that are like, you need to do live you, your life to the fullest. I'm like, don't stress me out. Don't stress me out. Do people ever ask you to make them laugh? Because what you do, they're like, yes. entertain me. Be is funny. It? Be funny right now. Yeah, show yes. me your puppet. I mean, that's what happens in psych all the time. It's like, now explain to me why my life is falling apart in like casual settings. I'm like, really? Yeah. Th- yeah. Oh, yeah. All the time. Wow. And Rick, Rick does it every time we're in a podcast. <laughs> well, you know, I do try to listen. When you got a cow on set, sometimes you want to get a little milk. Yeah. I mean that as an well, analogy. Mm. Let me say it differently. If you have a chicken, maybe you need some eggs. I mean, I don't like being compared to an animal, but. If you have a doctor, sometimes you're looking for specific information in a way that might not be, um, the most comfortable uh, platform for them to reveal it. Cool. Love that. Nailed it. Yeah, because cows, it's like you're saying, if you have a printer, you're going to want them to print some stuff. She's not just a printer. She's a doctor and a person. Yeah. Perfect. Yours is so much better. She can also send faxes. (laughs) Anyway. um, Yeah, so, uh, so yes, I think that the, the, I think the borderline diagnosis is interesting because it seems to be like, the the um it's like a, a a condemning thing that then i've talked to women in the audiences who have been like i have borderline and it seems to be a laurel that they rest upon do you also feel do that, that the, the sample isn't very fair because not only are you sampling women you're uh, only women no. you're also sampling women who are comfortable talking about that publicly oh, there are point. probably people who would not speak on it publicly and have a very i'm not as open with this stuff different point of view I just have a theory that the diagnosis of borderline has caused more problems than not because I ha- I know a lot of people who are like, I've been diagnosed as borderline and it's given them a way of, instead of doing research and figuring out what they need, it's given them a way to blame because borderline is just like a whole bunch of trauma based stuff that comes out in relationships and it gives, it feels like the whole, that it comes whole, out in relate. Is that true? It only comes out in relationships? Mainly. I mean, yeah, a lot of it, a lot of the manifestations are in relational dynamics. Like intimate relationships, not friendships? No, no, it can be like mother, daughter, any right, relationship, just relationship, work, oh, so, yeah, relationships, yeah, yeah. literally anything. I mean, involving other people. I think diagnosis in general, it, it, it's an interesting topic within the psychology world of how much benefit versus. Uh, what's the opposite? Detriment, Detriment, obstacles it is. And I I do think that sometimes people will take, and I don't know about borderline in particular, but will take a diagnosis and then allow it to justify, not explain, but justify absolutely everything they do. And Mm -hmm. I think it can alleviate them of their responsibility to an extent. And I say that cautiously. I don't think that happens all the time. Um, 
And I also understand why the tendency is there. But I, I think you can't stop right. taking ownership of your life. It's tough. And what you're dealing with is so difficult. But you're still, you still need to take ownership of it. Um, I received an autism diagnosis six years ago. And I talked about it for a bit. And then I stopped talking about it for years publicly. Mm -hmm. um, and I do again. Um, I don't not talk about it. I was a conscious choice that I just brought up again. But uh, I am sometimes sensitive of, I don't, the idea of using something as an excuse as opposed to just recognizing maybe an obstacle that you might have and finding ways of handling it. Um, uh, some might describe me as a little annoying. Uh, no. They take Tylenols before they have to talk to me. Um, Extra strength. That's all we have. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but um, there are some character traits of mine that, that uh, it's not because I'm autistic. The awareness that I lacked, especially when I was younger, uh, was a bit of an obstacle for me. And I've since tried really hard to better understand it. I think I've come out really well the other way. Um, but there are some times where like, I want to make jokes, but it's not really a joke. Mm -hmm. uh, the pants thing, for example, mm -hmm. like, I don't want to wear pants. Why? I, I have autism. That's that's using it as an excuse because I could wear pants. And mm. some people might really struggle with that more than I do. The reason I want to say it isn't as an excuse I'm allowed to, but I like for right or wrong, I want you to know, hey, this is something that you might not think about that is actually hard for me. Mm. And you knowing that, you know me knowing as your driver that you need this coffee might change my opinion of the situation. And I do find that that uh, it's a it's tough to do because it's really not because of autism. It it may I'm hypersensitive to to things that I might not I wouldn't be I don't think without this like um, the feeling of pants. I'm really sensitive to smells um, and textures, um, certain frequency sounds. Um, pants is one of them. I wear pants on stage, which was a decision that I made because like. I remember somebody, I don't remember who it was, but somebody once said like to somebody else, he always wears a jacket on stage. It looks like he doesn't want to be there. I don't know if I agreed or disagreed, but there was a part of me that understood it. Mm. Like I'm here for me, for you, whatever. You're, I'm as a professional. So it's like, I don't always wear pants. But more times than I, just wear the fucking pants, dude. What pants do you wear? Just jeans, blue jeans. Really? I would wear this. I saw you perform in sweatpants. I never got to see the jeans. I still wear sweatpants a lot. And it depends on what it is. They were like pink. Yeah, they're nice athletic sweatpants. But like the point I'm making is- Do you is, do this when fire trucks go by? Uh, so it's interesting. I don't know which ones, but some if it's really loud, yes, I cover my ears. But there are certain frequencies that, that I, but I also like, it's just loud and it's annoying. Mm -hmm. um, but what I'm getting at is like, I talked about this once on my pod, you got to say that. Uh, a friend of mine bought us tickets to go see Wicked. I love going to musicals. Um, he, I love going to shows. Uh, he and I have gone to shows a few times. This time he had tickets and somebody couldn't go. And do you want to come? And of course, no, that's not true. I think he actually got it specifically for us. Um, and I'm in my closet putting on pants. He didn't ask me to put on pants, but like we're going to a show. And I, not only are we going to a show, more than that, I felt like I was his guest. Mm. And I was in the closet and I'm like, I'm looking at the pants, which ones are going to fit. And I was really like, I wasn't having a panic attack, panic attack by any means, but like, if you were to try to explain to somebody who's never had a panic attack what it is, like it's like a big version of that. I'm just like, you know, I'm breathing heavy. I'm anxious. I, I, I could I, so I call, I texted him and I said, Hey man, um, I know it's theater, but like, is it cool if I just wear sweatpants? He goes, no, we're going to the theater. You should wear pants. I, I don't know how well he remembered whatever, but then I was going through my closet to find pants. I literally not just got sad, started crying tears down my face. Mm -hmm. I didn't know what to do. I literally start, not noises, but watery eyes and like the feeling of it. Mm -hmm. I'm looking through my pants and I'm seeing I have these three pairs of sweatpants that are form fitting. They're fine. They look like black pants. Let me wear these. And I'm crying. I start to cry because I, not only that I have to wear pants that I realized I'm in my closet for five minutes, like freaking out about this stupid thing. Mm. And I was like, Rick, you'll put on the pants. Once the pants are on you, you're there. It's fine. You've worn pants before. What did it feel like? Why, why did it feel resistant? Two things are happening. One is the, the understanding of what putting the pants on are going to feel like, just based on my expectations and memories or whatever it might be. Just like, I don't, I could, 
Do you wear contacts ever? No. The best way I feel like I can explain it, even for people that don't, is could you imagine contacts? You would know they're there. Oh, contact, you were obsessing about the, their presence just so that you get distracted by them. It makes it hard to be present. When I'm not present, I might as well just be completely in my head. Okay. So like glasses or sweatpants, contacts or jeans. Contacts is a suit. Anywhere in between is jeans, right? So like I don't want to put these on. I just want to wear my glasses. And I have to do this. And this person is counting on me. And this is what I'm supposed to do. And also I was crying like, why is this so hard for me to do? And like I felt like like... I felt in a way in that moment just very incapable. It also brought me back to just putting on socks was a really big problem for me when I was younger. And just like, it was a bit of a woes me moment, but I was like, this is so hard. It's not, but it was in that moment. And I was crying and I don't want to wear these pants. I wore the pants. I wasn't the most comfortable. Once they're on, they're on. But like, I would not say to him, I can't wear pants. I have autism because that's not, I can wear pants. And I also don't want to make that as an excuse because it isn't. But there is something that I've learned. I tell doctors now when I meet a new doctor for something, I tell them I have autism. Um, I had a doctor once get mad that I asked too many questions. Once he found out autism, he was very, very nice to me. Mm. So like, I do think it's necessary. Unfortunately, it gives people a little bit of context to understand, oh, but we also can't ignore the fact that certain diagnoses come with really real consequences. And we're not saying, like, take responsibility for that and don't have those consequences, don't have those symptoms, don't have those struggles anymore. That's unrealistic. So if you have PTSD, you might not like fireworks. It's not saying, like, per go to a fireworks show. Like, it's okay to go, hey, I have PTSD and I will not go to yeah. fireworks. But that's the benefit of the diagnosis. Wasn't exactly. The, the, but, like, I learned, oh, this or is Or don't even share your PTSD. You just go, I don't like fireworks. Yeah. It depends where you're at and if you want the person to know that or not. But this is not to say like now you push through and you just go because you're taking response. No, taking responsibility means meeting your needs. And sometimes that is and being but as don't your needs sometimes get in the way of your of other people's and also maybe even your own. Sometimes. Sure. Aren't there pants that are like sweatpants, but they look like pants? <laughs> She's on the pants. Uh, they're called joggers. And typically they go in sizes between small and extra large or whatever. But you, it's difficult to find them in length. And those don't fit me well. Are there any nice slacks? I, I All the pants I have are the more The more most comfortable, comfortable version. Like these headphones. I don't know. You don't obviously don't like them. But like these headphones you could wear for a while. Yeah, they're nice. Yeah. So you're very tactile. And you uh, yes. like I used to obsess about the seams of my pants. They had to line up perfectly on my legs. And now and you're I, just wearing anybody's clothes. Yeah. And I would obsess about it uh, constantly. And last night when I put this on, I put it on because I was going to oh, obsess about it. Oh, you put that on it. last night. Yeah. I slept in it. Okay. So I put it on because I was like, what if I, if I, I want to put it on because I want to wear it, but I was worried that there might be something on it that would get in my skin. You'd rather get in your skin before you're on camera. So then I was like, I'm going to put it on because just to say fuck you to the OCD so that I ex That's expose. I do sometimes. Yeah. So I had to do that. And then I was like, it smells like I'm with a guy I dated and it smelled like another dude. And I was like, I wonder if he's going to be like repellent to that because it smells like. An and I had to just be like, you will not take the shirt off as much as your brain is freaking out. that you are wearing a shirt that isn't yours. You will keep it on. And just double down. Tell him that you, you cheated. Have to double down. Yes. But we were talking about diagnosis and I interrupted. I apologize. I nope. have autism. <laughs> yeah, it's good. I think that conversation. Can you tell as soon as you met him, were you like autistic? He told, that's the first thing he said to me in the DMs. So I never had the chance to not know. Oh, it must have been about a post. Probably. It was a really that. like genuine message, but I think it just threw me off because I was not receiving messages like that from men. So seeing yours, I was like, is this real? Is it not? I was like, it seems really genuine. I am now remembering, not specific to autism anyway, but I am remembering that, that now and I had been following you for a bit. Um, That's nice, thank and you. Then, um, then there was something that happened. Was I remember like, this is, I don't remember what it was, but this was great. I'm sure I do, if I read, I'm like, I have learned this already. I just can't recall what that thing's. Gavin DeGraw has a song called Chariot. I don't know what came out. I heard it probably in 2004, but I remember I loved that song. And then I heard another song. I didn't know who it was and I loved it. And when I found out it was Gavin DeGraw, I'm like, oh, I just trust Gavin DeGraw. I went and I bought his album. Sure enough, liked all the songs. Mm. I was following you and like, ooh, this is nice, this is nice. And then there was a post that was like, okay, I'm into this point of view. And that's yes. when I messaged it. That's millennial millennial therapist, millennial mm -hmm. dot therapist on Instagram. Thank you. Not Great account. Thank you. The point is I, I knew right off the bat. Um, yeah, anyways, I'm a big fan of Rick's. I'm going to say that. 
Thank you. I love the way you operate. He's just so straightforward. And there's, I operate that way naturally. And I get shit for operating that way naturally. So when I meet other people that are as just. What kind of shit? People call me aggressive. That I know. Yeah. I mean, because you told me. Do that, you, are you a private practice? Do you have pri yeah. private practice? Is it in person? No, it's online now. She's a bit of a vagabond. I only say that because of the Lion King. Oh, it's true. I, I travel a lot. I've traveled nonstop almost for about eight years now. And what are you doing when you travel? Um, either research. So I, I uh, did research. I conducted a research in the Middle East. My doctorate was in Vienna, Austria. My parents are in Sydney, Australia. So now I'm based there. So it's just for fun, for pleasure, for work. Just Her book just came out in the past two weeks. She was wherever she was before Los Angeles, I know, because we podcasted, then went to New York, then back to LA, then New York, then London, and now back. And she just got back a few days ago. How are your arms, by the way? It's so sweet that he remembers my schedule. I'm like, feel pretty, pretty good about that. It's that's a, it's a lot. <laughs> yeah, but you nailed it. Um, good. My buddy who I talked about earlier, David, David Sullivan, oh I remember God. a trip that he did once. Um, he, he is down for whatever. Hey, you want to come over? Sure. He could be in California and we could be here. Yeah. So also I'm a my, bit like that though. If someone's like, Hey, I'm doing this event in that's cool. Italy. Do you want to come? I'm like, yeah. What a blessing. I, I'm not, I mean, it's literally that you both are able to with your schedule and can afford that. Like, because I'm sure people would do that if it made logistical sense. Of course. And if they had somebody to invite them somewhere. Signing, it's super, yeah, it's super privileged. I get it. David, um, who. She also uh, wrote a book. Yeah. Well, that's on her. No, he wants to talk about David. I want to say, I wanted to talk about this flight thing. Um, David doesn't need to fly in class. David could fall asleep inside of this ottoman. Yeah. Um, David was in Australia filming a show. I was in Cleveland with my family. Um, I was going to go to London. And David, I said, uh, uh, David comes to Cleveland sometimes just to be with my family and me. And we said, uh, he goes, uh, he goes, what, what are you up to? Because I was in Cleveland. He goes, I'm in Cleveland, I'm maybe going to London. He said, I don't want to go to London. Um, so I go, okay. So he bought tickets, but he, uh, I'll call it in a political way, I'll call it, he's economical, I guess. He Poor. flew. Uh, no, oh, no, no. I mean, Jewish, it's not my TV show. Jewish, Jewish. No, not Jewish. Oh. Just uh, he would rather <laughs> sleep in an ottoman than, than get less stops. So he flew from wherever he was in Australia to another place in Australia, probably Melbourne is my guess. Then from Melbourne to LAX. Didn't even fly out of LAX. Took an Uber from LAX to Burbank. Flew from Burbank to Vegas. Vegas to Chicago. Chicago to Cleveland for two days before Cleveland to London. To save money? I don't think he did it um, because he liked the food. Was he coming to meet you in Cleveland? Yeah, but and what? Be, just because. I was, yeah, I'm done with work. I'll come. I'll come hang out. Wow. That's a good friend. It's a great friend. And I've learned, I've le I've learned a lot from him. And we talked about this on this, on a different situation about going to a barbecue. Mm. And I didn't want to. He goes, just... You're, you'll have a good time. You'll be fine in the pants type of thing. And he taught me, because I just think it's such an attractive quality of his. I invited Rick to two events I was doing in New York for my book. He just didn't bother. I wasn't in, in, in the city. Yeah, but he could have been. It's like a three hour, four hour direct, whatever. Mm, yeah. yeah, but I wasn't from, here yet. I was in Los so Angeles. I'm so just, I'm just talking about how. What, ev what are but, these events? But I what do, are I do events? like being invited places and I like when people say, come on. And I knew that he wouldn't come. I was like, I'm going to invite this guy and he's not going to come. If but I was in town, I absolutely would have. Thanks. You don't have to say that. Yeah, you don't. I would have. I I um. I know you don't like people. Uh, <laughs> that's not true. I don't like obligation. Mm -hmm. I don't like having to do stuff if I don't want to. It's also easier when you're in a place where you're, you're, the center of attention is around you or a couple people rather than idling around other people that you don't know really what to do with yourself. I am consciously trying to do things. The same reason you said forcing yourself to do stuff for your OCD. I am constantly trying. I used to, I, so I'm in New Jersey a bit. Um, and when I'm here, I'm just with my girlfriend. I'm doing podcasts, whatever. But this time, I'm like, I stopped doing shows when I'm here because it's only a few weeks. I could take some time off. Because I'm in, I don't. I want to watch stuff and eat and hang out. Why do I have to go drive 45 minutes to do 15 minutes and drive back? Like Rick, just do it. Like do the things. Yeah. Because looking back on the past year, if it weren't for this podcast, I'd be like, I've done nothing. Yeah. So like, and I don't like that. So do the thing. You'll be glad you did the thing. 
So I am wanting to do things. It was fun hanging out with you at the cellar the other night. That was I great. Did the, I did a thing. Well, how and, did that show go? It was good. Yeah. And the show before was awesome. Yeah. Uh, I, uh, I went there and uh, right when I got there, uh, Jim Gaffigan came in Whoa. and Jerry Seinfeld came in. Oh, I'm and you jealous. I saw the, the time. Was it yeah. at the strip? It was at uh, Gotham. Oh, okay. And Gaffigan brought up Jerry. Jerry Seinfeld. <laughs> Uh, and then I went right up after Jerry and How had a that? great set wow. and felt really good about it. Cause like, it was a great set where it was like, I know they're going to be thinking about Jerry for a while as they should be, as I am. Yeah. Um, and I still like, like, I don't talk about this much because yes. you know, stand up's very hard and blah, blah, blah. But I got two applause breaks. Wow. It wasn't a very packed room. Um, Jerry got an applause when he went up. Um, but, uh, you got more applause. No, not necessarily. You got not necessarily. He's You're, counting. I, I, I did notice that. I did notice that, like, I wasn't nervous to go up after him. And whatever this may mean to whatever other people who aren't comics may know, I do. There is a thing, not for better or worse, where people could be. You're, you could people could get nervous if, if the room is bad, or people could get nervous if the person before you just demolished. Yes. Um. I just felt before he went up, like I'm so glad I'm going up after him. I want to go oh. up after him. Um. Was this set good? Uh. Yeah, I've seen him multiple times. Okay. This is probably stuff he's still working on. It was still, I mean, if I had never seen him before, I know he was, he's very funny. But like it wasn't yeah. perfected yet. I mean, he's, he's, I he's, see the, him. he's one of the greatest to ever do it. He's a king. Yeah. Um, it's great going after, you always think it's going to be awful going up after famous people, but there is like a, a tension release almost where it can oh, be really. that to me. Because you go up and you're like, I've followed all these people at the cellar and you go up and you're like, that fucking guy, right? And they're like, yeah, this is crazy. And they're with you. Like, they're like, we know that you're not him and we know <laughs> that you're the comic that has to follow him. Right. So if you're at all good, people are like, hell yeah. Like, oh, almost like almost you're like, an underdog. You feel they're projecting yeah. you're an underdog. Yeah. You think they're nice. conscious of that? Oh, yeah. I yeah. mean, I mean, Maybe I never. New York were smart. I never go up and not say, like, I'll be like, sure, I'll follow Louie. Okay, here I am, you know. You opened for him for a special, didn't you? No, I mean, I opened for him for a while across the country. But, I mean, just like if you Ooh. didn't know that and you're just at the cellar. I found out about you because John Michael, shout out to John Michael, um, who edits the podcast, um, he told me about you. And uh, I thought he watched you on his, his special that he did. But must have. But I thought it was related to Louie or something. I uh, opened for him, but I wasn't on his special. Whatever it was, he saw you do something, I think. And then uh, when he said that, I'm like, oh, people have sent me messages about you. Nice. Um, and that's when I then looked you up. And I thought, well, I guess. So I <laughs> asked you on. Yeah. He didn't know the debris I'd be carrying into the house on my outside, on my external self. I'm surprised you had me back. I feel like someone who's not a comic, but loves comedy. I get like nervous when I watch people that are bombing. Like I, mm -hmm. I, I just, I want to like hug them on stage. I just want to go be like, put the mic down. Yeah. <laughs> that would make them feel good. Just yell that. <laughs> no, but it's like, it actually gives me anxiety. It was interesting watching you because you did really well. But because I knew I was like, it was like watching your child perform. Where I was like anxious <laughs> for you. <laughs> And it was so funny because I, I get that way. My I have a lot of friends who are musicians, but when you're in the audience and you know the person, you're like, please be good. Please don't yeah. bomb. And not for me, but like for you. And it just, it gives me anxiety. So, so. But you were great. Like it was awesome. Like I relaxed, but like the first 15 seconds, I was like, what's going to happen? So I have a really strong take on that. Yeah. That. Um, Wait, pause. What time is it? Sorry. 2.15. How are you? I have to leave the city. I have to leave soon. Set timer for 10 minutes. Is that okay? Yeah. Okay. I don't want to cut a, cut a good thing short. Um, is that okay? 10 minutes? Yeah, that's great. Uh, I recognize that because I was very, and still am, but was even more so very experimental when I was first starting out. My first starting out, I mean, 10 plus years. And uh, people would be uncomfortable. And what I noticed was, because I was trying to play it as real as possible. And also I only had so much things I could control mm -hmm. with how people got what I was doing. And when people are the most uncomfortable, sometimes it's by design so that you could release something, but they're uncomfortable for you, whether they realize it or not. Mm -hmm. um, 
And I, I, I made this observation before that like the only difference between laughing at somebody and with somebody is based on the person's awareness of themselves. <laughs> mm. If I were to trip and fall and I was embarrassed and people were laughing at me, they're making fun. Mm. But if I also see what they see, not that what they see is the only thing, but if I also could appreciate, I'm not hurt, This I fell in the mud, like you get it at least, then they're in on it. Mm -hmm. You're in on it. Mm -hmm. So if, if the audience trusts that whatever you're doing uncomfortable or not it's on purpose yeah that, you, that if the audience trusts not that you're funny which you should be but that he's or she is in control or mm -hmm. they because mm -hmm. of the sex in the city and how what's her name is a stand-up comedian is a they right um I, i'm sure John there's Marcos another one or AC? what's her name i'm not nope, sure well, we'll put up a picture here um shay guevara shay shay shay, shay. Um, really bad depiction right there's he's she's and shays right uh, really good. And really uh, good. if they trust that you're in control, like, oh, I'm nervous. This person's vomiting. I just want to hug them. But if they don't look like they need a hug, mm -hmm. it's like I could relax. I'm not feeling. You that can also thing. hate that person, though. If I'm bombing and I'm settling back into it, like I'm like, I don't give a fuck. If but I'm that, bombing. but that's a defensive. That's overcompensating right. because that isn't you being in control. That's you pretending that you are. That's you saying I don't. When people say I don't care, get your smoothie. Yeah. When people say, I don't care, they do. Mm. You could care without it de deciding for you. So, oh, also, uh, um, uh, I want to say something about, uh, uh, if you'd like to, um, I'd like you to, to actually, to Jordan, um, I told her something uh, that Jordan had mentioned that last time that there was nothing on the walls. I love them. And I have a taxidermied rat sitting on a toilet. Really? And it's my favorite object. On your toilet? On a toilet. Oh, on the toilet. Just like that. <laughs> okay. and on so your I'm toilet. I'm a huge fan. And I Thank love you. them. I Thank love little things. Actually, I really did get these for you. Really? Well, you, said we, you couldn't have... Apartment, but for you. You couldn't have chosen better. You could come in or you could yell. I got them for you. Thank you. I'm going to take them on my way out. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks so much. Just bring them back next time. Okay, cool. I will. We'd love to have you back. Yeah, I'll be back. I'll shower. Uh, Schwarzenegger. I'll be back. Well, she the first looks like one. Julia Roberts. <sighs> Doesn't she? I would say yes because I want to yes and you, but I don't think you could compare her to anybody. Oh. We'll be right back. That's cute. Wiggy, get up here. You'll love me forever. Get up here. <laughs> that's like that's like them redoing Mortal Kombat before Scorpion figured it out. Um, they get it. Okay. All right. Do you want to see Jordan perform? Yeah, of course. Can we get on a show together before I leave? Yes. Oh my god. And come to that. Yeah, I'd love that. What show could we do? Why don't we just put on a show? Union Hall, me and you, co-headlining. Um, could could we do that with a, a week's notice? You're only here for another week. Uh, yeah, a little over a week. Let's set up a show. Oh my yeah, god, do us. it. That'd be fun. Can what it be are, like for Sarah? Can we make that super explicit? We'll call it the It's on Me Show. Yeah. <gasps> Amazing. And our merch will just be your books. Yes. <laughs> we'll keep but we'll sign them. <laughs> yeah. Oh my God. Can you please? This is the best idea ever. Yeah. That'd be great. <laughs> I love this. I'll just stand there and you sign. Yeah. Yeah. People can take a picture with you and then we'll sign it. I love it. I mean, I'm into it. Also, Sorry. another reason why I want to have a book. Not really. I never really thought about this, but that's great merch. Because like merch. it's a product, but to treat it as merch. I would like to write a book. I just am deciding right now. It's art. Too. It's, we're writing a book, and that's kind of my. Those Are you guys writing a idea. book together? What would it be? Fun, joke, art, and the and motorcycle diaries. So yeah, I. That's I, it. That's I, actually the title. Joke, I, jokes and the, the art of Zen maintenance. Then I'll leave it at that. Okay. There's an idea for something I wanted to do for years, and uh, uh, brought it up with Sarah like a year and a half ago. And uh, you know, I'm, I'm busy. You're so busy. Uh, but I really wanted to do it. Is it funny? No, I mean it's hard. It's hard to make something that without humor in it, if that's our language. Um, but uh, there's a lot of things that I have learned that weren't very intuitive to me, um, and I'm sure everybody learned things that are intuitive, some not them. And there's a lot of social rules that people subscribe to, whether they want to or not. It's part of the culture, um, and it's like these unwritten rules. So I want to have a book that's like unwritten rules written, and nice. it, it could be you know be from my perspective. I have a good one. Go ahead. I've, I've been talking about this on stage that how strange it is that plungers, we plunge the toilet and then we just put the plunger right next to the toilet. I don't know if it's a book, but I think about that all the time. I mean, that's unbelievable. Yeah, it's that gross. That we have artificial intelligence, that we have all of this crazy, we have orchids that are propped up by sticks and we can't figure out what to do with the plunger, the poopy stick, and we just put it right next to us. As a doctor, what do you think? 
We'll definitely include that in the book. Oh, I think God. it's going to help millions. Just to know. I mean, I, my, my, my thing is just uh, use a plunger, throw it away and stop throw taking away. such massive shit. Yeah, throw it away. Yep. Un- you can't touch a black girl's hair. I found that out the other night at a strip oh, club. I knew that. Yeah. I mean, I, I knew that, but Martin. I didn't know that it was like, I thought it was kind of like a trope and that nobody's really trying to touch people's hair. You're not supposed to touch a black woman's hair and never touch a black man's radio. Cut really? The Beach Boys are great American music. The Beach Boys are going to get you a great ass whooping. Don't ever touch a black man's radio, boy. Gotcha. So all of this and more. <laughs> <laughs> um, so we have to wrap it up. Um, which is something I think you've never asked a man to do. Is that correct? I No, no, no. I never do that. Yeah. You'll wear their anything. Yeah. And um, what would you like to plug other than your October 27th uh, show, which will be over by the time this comes out? <laughs> when does this come out? <sighs> it's hard to say, but my guess will be mid to end of November. Okay. Just watch my half hour on uh, YouTube, please. And listen to BNN. Jordan. Oh, that came out. I didn't see. I remember when you were recording it. John Michael came to it. Wow, what did he think? Um, he liked it. John okay. Michael, uh, uh, put, uh, put up a little text um, with what you think and have it be like the Star Wars where it goes like this. And now react to what you're... And will you do the Star Wars John Michael song, John Williams song? John Michael, John Williams, whoa. No. W upside down is M. Yeah, in a galaxy far, far away. Mm. Are you going to buy my Uber? Yes. That's so nice. You know, I got her Uber both ways. <gasps> But when I did uh, being Ian with uh, Sorry about that. with uh, Ian, um, you only got me one way. That's true. So this way, you only get one way and then we're even. But if you want, I could get you here too. You no, just said okay. you're getting a car. That's okay. Is it too late? I just can't justify it both ways, being a transit commuter that I am. Can't say that anymore. <gasps> Sorry. Just say commuting uh, as a person who commutes uh, two ways. Right. You also aren't supposed to say transatlantic anymore, I learned. Mm. Or bi-coastal. You're supposed to just say. Tri- Pan-coastal. Thank you. What can you what can you plug other than other than the by the time this comes out award winning best selling mm-hmm. it's on me that's it which I recommend the audio version if you have trouble reading I actually just I'm starting a society that's more philosophy and art based it's going to be announced soon it's called the phenomenological society and it's just like content I never get to write about um, so it's kind of if you like my psych content Stan millennial therapist. If you want more like the philosophy, stay on, like stay with, follow the millennial therapist. And how do they find the society? So the only society I know is the Midnight Society from Are You Afraid of the Dark? Right. I'll be talking about it. It'll be in my bio soon. It's going to be fun. We'll we'll have live events. We'll have uh, like uh, content coming out. Around the world? Probably. Starting New York and Berlin. No social media. If you ever do a live event where where we are, could we open the event? You sure can. (gasps) I would love that. Society but you need to make so some like cool. philosophical jokes. You can't I have a puppet. just. Everything I do is philosophical. I have philosophy jokes. Amazing. And he's Jewish. Yeah. The, 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 what the puppet represents is basically how uh, we are all uh, being controlled by both our subconscious and the societies that we were forced into. And it's kind of like you could choose your friends, but not your biological family. Mm. So we get to control. Oh, it's actually really deep, but we ran out of time. So thank you all so much for coming. Um, and uh, I don't mean that as a responsibility. <laughs> and uh, where can we see you? Can we see you at the, you know, being Jordan dot Ian? Uh, you can, I got tour dates, Jordan Jensen comedy dot com. Um, put, we'll put them up Star Wars style. Da, 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 yep. And uh, follow me on Instagram, Jordan Jensen, LOL style. I'll go I follow got a you now. Twitter if you can find that. Nice. Good luck. How's that? It's good. Um, so I take Polaroids, don't have my Polaroid here, but I, I'm going to need to take a snapshot and maybe figure something out. Could you both just look to camera and smile as if it were Polaroid? No, individual. They're going to be one, at a, one oh, individual. Oh, jeez. Okay. That's a bit rude. Okay. And one from you. And then maybe for the thumbnail, I'll just go here and the three of us can get it. Okay, but you have to do the blanket. Oh! Let me hear the you. Okay. Um, you have to hold it for 10 seconds. Thank you.
Scoot-doo, blabbity-blue, 